Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome everyone. How was your Sunday? How was the service today? How are you doing? Hello, Bean family. How are we doing? I'm doing awesome, fabulous. I'm doing great. I'm doing really, really great. And I'm grateful to be alive. Yes, I am grateful to be alive. I'm doing great. Super great. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> yes, we're doing great. We're doing awesome. Daddy has been so faithful. I want us to tell him in this song that we are grateful. Um, it's it's in one of the Nigerian languages. It says Nare Kele, Nare Kele. Um it's a worship and it's a praise at the same time. I want us to tell him from our heart. I'm going to share the link. It's in English and in the, the same, the Nigerian language and in English. So I'm going to share the link. That way you can follow. Oh, yes. The fountain of life, there is none like you. Accept our praises. It was a great week. We're starting a wonderful week. Oh, yes, you are. My Savior, oh, yes, he is Lord. He owns us and is our savior. When you get into temptation, you get into, into a hard place. He is your savior. Oh, I recall, accept our praises. Oh, yes, for all the promotions this week, Father, in the view household, we say accept our praises, accept our worship. Oh, yes, accept our praise, Lord. Ooh. Accept, accept our praise, accept our worship from the view house home. Accept our praise, accept our worship. Brother and friend of the lonely, oh, fountain of life, Jesus, you are the fountain of life. Accept our praises, accept the praise of the view household tonight. Oh, you're so faithful 
Somebody you've been thinking, there are some things when you think about the bring sadness, the bring sorrow, the bring pain, you try to forget about it. Sometimes it comes, it comes rushing into your memory like an un unrestrained uh, um, bandit, a bandit coming with some force. The Lord said tonight, I will wipe off those memories. I'm wiping them off. I'm wiping them off with fire. I'm wiping them off with my fire. I'm wiping them off. I am going to consume them like laser will go into the, the body of a human being and just pick out the cancer. He said, my fire is being released to pick out those memories. Every time you begin to think about it, it will not bring the pain that it usually will bring. It will not bring regret. It will not bring uh, um, disappointment. Every time the enemy will want to come back. Yes, the enemy will want to come back, but by the time it will come back, yes, the enemy 
it will come back. It, we, we will find out that that stronghold is no more there in your mind. It will not have anything to hold on to because tonight is your night of deliverance. This moment, it could be morning where you are. It's your morning of deliverance. He's deliver, he is bringing deliverance, especially in the mind, in the soulish realm. The deliverance that is happening, taking place now is in your soul. Somebody you've struggled with a painful memory with some painful memories, things in your past. Every time they come, they come like an armed bandit to keep you in the same place. As a matter of fact, somebody, it, it gives you migraine. When it comes, you begin to feel pain in your head. It, today is the end. You felt that migraine and it, today is the end. This is the warrant of arrest. For that crazy thought that every time it comes, it comes and brings you headache. We Somebody, when, when you begin to have those flashbacks from your past, you begin to go into depression, you begin to go into regret. It's like a spiral move. You go into depression, you go into regret, and very soon you begin to feel frustrated. Very soon you begin to attract the spirit of rejection, and you begin to say, but with this kind of a life, with this kind of a thought life, how will I ever attract somebody that I will marry? How will I attract somebody that can love me? I want you to know that deliverance is here. Every time you begin to think about, any time the enemy will want to remind you of those incidents and occurrence in your past, you will tell the enemy you are consumed by the fire of God. The fire of God already consumed you. You don't have a place in my life and my destiny. There's somebody you 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 spoke with somebody this week. You were talking with someone this week, this week, Thursday or Friday, Thursday or Friday, and the person said something that triggered you. And the, the person said something that made you remember something they that person had done in the past, and you begin to ask yourself, is this how I'm going to live my life? I can hear you clearly say, is this the way my life is going to go? Is this my destiny? Lord, is this what you gave me? It feels more like a husband and a wife having a discussion and then one of the spouses, it could be the husband or the wife asking the Lord, is this really what you gave me in a wife or in a husband? The Lord said, listen, that is the plan of the enemy and you have definitely fed that thought because you have made your spouse or it could be a good friend, but I could feel like the relationship was intimate because the person who spoke to you actually affected your soul realm. It made you sad. It made you regret. Yes, that's the word. Not so much sadness, but regret. You started asking yourself questions. Is this the way I'm going to live all my life? Am I really, really called into this level of pain and rejection? The Lord said, no, look up to me. Look up to me. It is not about him. It's not about her. It's about me. Why are you giving so much attention to who and what you shouldn't give your attention to? How many times will I tell you, move on, look up to me? How many times will I tell you that particular relationship will keep bringing you pain? And the reason is because you have not counted the cost yet. If you count the cost, you realize that it's very costly to be in that relationship in the flesh. This particular person or persons, um, this relationship is not somebody you just met yesterday. It's somebody you've been in a relationship for a while. And every time you take your eyes off them and look up to the Lord, you see progress. You see progress in your walk with God. You see progress in your walk, in, uh, uh, even in your physical body. You feel stability in your soul, in your spirit, your soul, and even in your relationship with other people. But every time you hold on to this individual or this of individuals, you begin to see yourself going down in all areas of your life. And that is said, I can only, I will, when, when I, you cannot have two gods. That is, you can't. You can only have one God, and it's me. And I am so ready to write with you. I am ready to take you in the Poji, Kazo, Kovra, Ika, Lezon, Kukoni, Kinaka, Lingre, Konaka. Do you know I have called you into science and wonders? Do you know I have called you into science and wonders? Do you know I have called you to walk in places that a few people in their lifetime would trade in? Do you know that I've called you when I created you? I created you to bring you 
Jésus. Rizo kande la croto kaza. Reza kato kroko tikini kala croto paranze. Kavro no koza. Haven't you seen in your dreams? Haven't you heard when I speak to you? Haven't you heard when I show you in, in, in normal life what you're supposed to do? It, it's not a child's play. Yes, sometimes your mind is like you're, you're, you're trying to dream too high. You're trying to think too much. But no, no, no. It is me. I'm calling you to will and to do of my pleasure. I created you to soar like an eagle. But you have made up your mind and you have decided to keep walking with the chickens but tonight i called you into that room i pull you into that room i pull you into that room and make up your mind make up your mind this i can literally see at least three people this word is direct for you it's coming directly into your spirit it's very weakness and daddy is saying to you that if you choose to stay with the chickens you will remain a chicken but if you choose to move to fly with me you will be the eagle that i've created you to be he said the choice is yours the choice is yours how long will you want to stay in pain when i have provided the medication i have told you the solution is relationship with me the solution is relationship with me tonight is the night of your salvation is the night of your deliverance is the night of setting you apart is the night of calling you to walk with me in those strange things that are created for you it's not about how you look it's not about how you feel it's not about who will accept you it's not about who will reject you it's about what i created you to do you have rejected yourself enough ah i can hear the lord say the person or this person you have disqualified yourself enough but then he said tonight qualify yourself what she has said you nobody ever you know that you, you have never said this thing to anybody you know you've never consulted anyone and told them what i have said by my servant's mouth therefore i'm calling you to know that i am confirming the word i am giving you comfort i am giving you direction he said before the end of may 2019 you will begin to see evidence that i called you into that realm because you will begin to see that things will begin to fall in place some people will drop off your life you will begin to hear things that are not alterable things i will show you in your dreams you will be you will be scared to share with other people because it will be so big he said between now and me between now and me i have scheduled your training session between now and me i have scheduled your training session angels will begin to speak to you angels will begin to speak to you you will begin to hear strange things things that are so supernatural and then you begin to wonder why am i hearing these things then you will remember that i spoke to you on the 17th of february that between now and me i am going to train you and begin to train you and begin to train you to walk in the supernatural you see unfortunately what i'm calling you to walk into nobody has stepped into it yet nobody has stepped into it yet that is why i will mentor you myself that is why i will train you myself that is why i will lift you myself i don't want pollution i don't want unbelief i will bring in midwives from left and right but i will train you myself i will mentor you myself i will send my angels to mentor you by my spirit within you you will know what to say you will know what to do lingo no mokuzi kalakro I cut the chains. I cut the chains. I cut the chains. Mm. Somebody, you literally feel like something is tied around your leg. I cut the chains in the name of Jesus. I cut the chains. If you were sitting down, I dare you stand up and begin to jump, begin to lose your leg, begin to shoot, hit your legs on the floor or run around, pace the floor. There's somebody, chains were on your leg. I can see those chains clearly. I cut the chains. I said, go free by the fire of God. Let the chains be broken broken let the chains be broken let the chains be broken by the fire of god yes you can feel fire on your legs it is you 
Yes, maybe you think it was a physical chain. No. Some people, maybe you didn't even realize there was a chain on your leg. But as you begin to feel the fire around your ankles, begin to say, it's me. Begin to receive it and begin to decree and declare the chains a bunch of the chains, a bunch of the chains, a bunch of the chains, a bunch of. In the name of Jesus, receive complete freedom. Freedom to run with the Lord, run in the Lord, soar in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, as you begin to feel the fire for somebody, you, you, your, your chains were wrapped all over your body and the fire of God is coming on your body from the crown of your head or oh, you were, the, the chain, it was double wrapped around your chest and your neck and from your waist to your neck, the chain was wrapped more than twice. You will feel the most heat around that area. The reason is because the fire of God is going to concentrate on those chains and it's going to burn them all into ashes. And you're going to run with the Lord. You're going to breathe different. That person that the chain was wrapped the most around your chest and your neck area, you will begin to breathe differently. It affected your breathing from tonight, from this moment. If I were you, I'll breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Do it three times. Breathe in. Breathe out. In the name of Jesus, that chain is broken. The chain of bronchitis is broken. The chain of asthma is broken. The chain of every form of limitation in your breath. It was a, it's a demonic chain that was wrapped around your chest. More than three times, that chain was wrapped. Yes, even your destiny was wrapped with that same chain. But from tonight, I give you the wings of the eagle. Fly high. Fly high in the name of Jesus. Fly high. Father, I thank you for the deliverance of your people. I thank you for safety in the house. I thank you for safety in the house. I thank you for salvation you've brought in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I decree and I declare that if you are a barren woman, let your womb be open in the name of Jesus. Let your womb be open. I curse fibroids from the roots. Fibroids die and pass out physically. Pass out physically. Let that lump come out in the name of Jesus. Shut up your mouth. You cannot speak. You can't talk otherwise. The blood is against you. As a matter of fact, I send the fire into the wombs of the women that are watching that need babies. I send the fire. I send the fire. The women that are focused, receiving, and they have fibrous. They could be expecting to have children or not. Any 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 challenge in your womb area, it could be fiber, any kind of growth. I send the fire. I send the fire. Let the fire begin to burn in your belly area. Let it bring about the deliverance. Be it a chain, be it a physical chain, be it a demonic chain, be it a um, physical as to say, be it a lump that you know it's there, be it a lump you can feel, I send the fire of God, let it consume it into ashes in the name of Jesus, lump in the breast, I curse you to die by the fire of God, I curse you to die by the fire of God, I curse you to die in the name of Jesus, die, somebody say no, it's my right breast, die as well, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, let the five blood die from the root in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the deliverance of your people. I thank you for safety. I thank you for liberation in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for such a great, great visitation, for such a great visitation, for such a great visitation. And the Lord say, hey, listen, it is not a disappointment. It is not a disappointment. Oh, I keep hearing you say, oh my God, what a disappointment. What a disappointment. He said, no, it's not a disappointment. It's not a disappointment. I know what I have for you. I know what I have for you. He said, you are not a peak 
Ooh, he said, you are not a pig. Why would you choose to keep eating from the floor? Why do you want to keep eating the crumbs? You are not a pig. You're not a pig, my daughter. I'm picking you out of that crazy, dirty relationship because you are not a pig. Yes, what would people say? What are you caring about what people would say when every single time uh, I deliver you, you go back into the mess. I bring you out. You go back into the mess because your mind keep asking you, what would people say? What he said, what would I say? That he said, you 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 call it a disappointment because you're not looking at what I will say. He said, Have you thought about it? Have you asked yourself what will my heavenly father say? He said, when you begin to look in my lens, you will see that it's not a disappointment. He said, Stop looking at the wrong lens, you're not a peak. I value you. I bought you with my blood. I bought you with my blood. You're not a pig. And I have better for you. I have greater and I have better. I have better and I have greater. I have better and I have greater. Turn around, turn around and look up to me. I have better and I have greater. Thank you, daddy. We're so grateful. We're so thankful, Lord for this visitation there's somebody your dad is sick your dad is sick and the 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 vedic the vedic is that is stomach ulcer and that stomach ulcer is about to turn into a stomach cancer we curse that ulcer to die in the name of jesus from the root we say die die from your roots in the name of jesus he will not die, he will live, and he will declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yes, your dad will not die. He will live, and he will declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I speak peace to you. Peace, peace, peace. Somebody's mind, your mind is, is up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. It is a demonic um, um, setup. It's like a clock that the enemy has has, has set. And the, the purpose, the, the reason why your mind is doing um, the, the, the overtime, the over working overload, overload thinking, overload uh, um, anxiety is because he is he's programming you. It's programming you. He's programming you. Oh, Jesus. He's programming you. Mercy, 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 mercy. He's programming you to kill yourself. He's actually setting you up so you can get to a place where you say, what is the purpose of living? What is the need for life? And then you kill yourself. But daddy said, not at my watch. Not at my watch. Not at my watch. Not at my watch. That is said, not at my watch. You will not kill yourself because deliverance has come to you in the name of Jesus. Deliverance has come to you in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare, mind be still in the name of Jesus. Mind be still you in the name of Jesus and I go ahead and I say you will not die, you will live and you will declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living oh yeah, thank you Lord I begin to unset that clock as a matter of fact I send the fire to burn that clock clock fire upon you fire upon you what a dirty, filthy clock. That's why the enemy has been pouring bad, negative thoughts into your mind. Because he they actually took an old, dirty clock. Dirty, filthy, dirty old clock. And they kept speaking what they wanted you to begin to think in that clock. And that's how your mind has been functioning like a clock on stop. Burn forever in the name of Jesus. Receive your deliverance. Receive your healing. Receive your breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Your mind will not play that nonsense anymore. Because that old filthy clock 
is consumed. Look at that. The person, you, you will hear from the person who set that clock. Between now and before we end this, this 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 session somebody is going to call you because as that clock was burning i saw somebody come out of the old clock i literally could see somebody popped out of the clock when the clock was burning it, it, it literally was burning their face and they popped out like oh my goodness oh my goodness they will either repent or they will die or they will have burns on their face in the name of jesus Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for what you have in store for us, Lord. I thank you for deliverance for this family member, Lord, that their mind is stable. There is peace in your mind. There is peace in your soul. From tonight, your mind will be stable. From tonight, your mind will be at peace. You will try to be angry and anxious. You will never be able to do it again because that power has been released. That power, you'll be released from that bondage and the person who did it is burning. The fire of God is on that person and is burning them in the face. In the face. Father, let that fire burn everywhere. Since wickedness is good, let them enjoy it. If they choose to repent, Lord, we ask for mercy. When they choose to repent, we ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. If they refuse to repent, let that fire not only burn their face. Let it burn their face. They are everything. Jesus. But we ask for mercy. Our desire is mercy, Lord. Your word says you don't wish for anyone to perish. Oh, but if it's a witch, let that witch die. Your words is so far not a witch to live. If they have decided to be practicing witches, let them die in the name of Jesus. Let them die in the name of Jesus. Lord, if it's a human that was a victim of wickedness, have mercy and save their soul. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Lord. We give you thanks. We praise you. We say, Father, lift up your hands where you are. And say, Father, I thank you. I thank you. This is my night. Or oh, this is my morning. This is my day. Lord, I refuse to leave this connection the same. I refuse to leave this online meeting the same. I refuse to leave this family meeting the same. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Shika Lokobrinika Santa Layanto. I refuse to leave the same. I refuse to leave the same. I see healing in the chest area. The chest area. It could be your spirit man, your, your innermost, innermost being being healed. It could be your physical chest being healed. But I see, I see a walk done in the chest area, the chest. That is back in the chest area. Receive healing. Receive deliverance in your chest area. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive healing. I receive healing. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Shantali Kozantarabra. I speak peace to the homes that are connected. Peace to the homes that will listen. Peace in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Peace, peace, peace. Let that storm be calm in the name of Jesus. Yes, the storm can be out there, but it won't get into your heart. Let your heart be focused on the Lord. Let your mind be stable in Him. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For great is your faithfulness. Oh, he said, you don't need it. You don't need it. You don't. You don't need it. All you need is me. All you need is me. Yes, truly one with me is majority. Don't you believe it? That one with me is majority. I am. Oh, he says, he's telling somebody, say, I am. I am. My name is I am. What do you want me to be for you tonight? Do you want me to be a healer? I am. 
You want me to be your friend? I am. You want me to be a husband? I am. You want me to be your way maker? I am. You want me to be your comforter? I am. You want me to be your teacher? I am. Oh, my name is I am. My name is the I am. The definite only me. Oh, yes, daddy. I want you to be the one that brings my Bible back to my home. I want you to be my pathfinder tonight, daddy. I'm talking to him. You begin to tell him what you want him to be. Daddy, I want everything that was missing to be brought in now. Yes, the angels can drop it here. I wouldn't be scared. I would take it out. I choose the supernatural. I choose the supernatural. I choose the supernatural. Peace be still. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Don't be disconnected, stay connected. Even as we teach, I want you to stay connected. You can tell it's not relationship institute as usual. The presence of the Lord is thick, it's heavy. And I want us to not be casual at all. Destinies are being shifted, lives are being transformed. You can tell some things are happening. You can tell there's so much deliverance in the house. He go kuli kazante le kongro mi kizanta la bayante ketozo kavronti la gendo lo brande le gaza. I got up with praise in my heart. I got up with thanksgiving in my heart, and I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew it that that is about to do some things. Sometimes you begin to give praise without seeing anything in the physical because your spirit man is ahead, is, is spirit life ahead of the physical realm. When your spirit man begins to rejoice, you know something has happened, but your, your soul realm will catch up. I want you to thank him for what you're expecting tonight. Maybe your word of prophecy didn't come, but he said, I am. That last word of prophecy, if that's all we got tonight, that is huge. When you know him as the I am, everything else you can get from the I am. Everything else comes when you know that he is I am. I am, I am, I am, I am. He is the I am. Begin to give him thanks for what you're expecting. I can tell you his presence is so, so thick in our midst. He is the biggest that we can ever look up to. He is the strongest you can ever hold on to. He is everything you can ever need. He's the I am. He is the I am. He can be the husband you're looking for. He can be the wife you desire to have. Lemo janda la bayande le goza. Hey, I am. You are my way maker. You are my pathfinder. Oh, I look up to you. 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 My trust is in 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 you. No, not in man, not in what man can say or do. My trust is in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just give him praise. Do the next thing he asks you to do. Thank you. Faithful God. Faithful God. Thank you. 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 Hi. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody receive strength. Receive strength for the journey ahead of you. Receive strength. Receive strength. Receive strength. Unfortunately, well, I take that back. The somebody receives strength and receive comfort. Receive strength and receive comfort. Somebody literally pass out into the other realm in your family. I'm not sure if you already have the news or you're still going to hear about it, but that is a receive my strength, receive my comfort. Yes, the somebody you're about somebody in your family is about to go to the other side 
and it's going to be somebody you need strength you need comfort to be able to make it i literally could hear him say receive strength receive my comfort maybe you've already received the news that somebody in your family has gone to the other side that is a receive strength receive my comfort if not you're going to receive that news you go, you're going to be receiving that news but that is a receive strength receive my comfort receive strength receive my comfort don't be discouraged don't be like whoa i wasn't expecting that that is telling you he tells us the end from the beginning so receive strength and receive comfort receive strength receive comfort in the name of jesus oh in lekujata brende legoza oh strength from within lay your hands on your belly and say father in the name of jesus i receive strength i would not be disappointed i would not be moved thank you for letting me know so i will look up to you amen um, um, one of those, it could be more than one, but I could hear him say, your family is going to require this strength and they're going to be looking up to you because you'll be the strong one in this season to carry everyone else. You have, you need, you will, you'll be required to have this strength so you can carry everyone else. Yes, your family will literally be expecting someone to be strong. They'll look to, up to someone to stand so they can be like, what do we do? And that is going to give you the wisdom. He's going to give you instructions for your family. He's going to tell you what they need to do. And then you will be able to help them transition right. Yes, it's a big, major transition. It's a major, 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 major transition in your family, in your life, in your life. I'm not sure who this is, but listen, come back. If you're a Bill family member, somebody that's in the Bill Relationship Institute, please come back to us so we can stand with you in prayer. We can support you. But daddy is saying you, you will hear the news. I hope it, it could be this week or next week. I don't know, but somebody is about a transition that will change the, 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 your life, the life of your family. But daddy is telling you not to be discouraged. He knows about it. It's not one of the things where he said, pray so the person will not die. Uh, um, transition, right? Or promoted. Hope the person is in the Lord because if it's in the Lord, it's a promotion. Um, Sometimes that he will say, no, pray against it. And there are times when he will say, the promotion is right here and that person will need to transition. I could hear him clearly say, receive strength and receive comfort. Amen. Glory to daddy. How's everyone doing? Hallelujah. What a presence we had today. I love this. I'm just going to go back and watch this and have some Holy Ghost moments. Amen. So many words came. I hope you received yours. I hope you took your word. Listen, these things are not man-made. I didn't come here to do that. You know I come to teach. My notes and my book are all stacked here. We were not planning to uh, um, give words of knowledge. First of all, if somebody plans to give you a word of knowledge, <laughs> you better run away. That's not daddy. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost takes over and do what he plans to do and how he plans to do it. Amen. I'm praying that you received your word. Chains are off. So many chains were broken. Many of them were burnt by fire. My God, you will see some things. Um, Things you wanted to do in the Lord, with the Lord, that were like very challenging. You realize that you begin to do them. Um, somebody, I could see literally something fell off your eyes. It could be somebody that could not see before. Something just fell off your eyes. Kills. It could be that you need to be, you'll be seeing the word of God more, but I could see something fall off somebody's eyes. If you, Let's take that literally. If you could not see, take off your glasses and begin to, to begin to practice seeing, begin to see different in Jesus' name. And if it's somebody, uh, there's something that was, you could not a revelation, it could be revelation that it could just open your eyes to see some things that you've been wanting to see, and you have just seen them right now in the spirit. Listen, skills just fell off somebody's eyes. Yes, skills. I could literally see something drop off your eyes. Oh, not only the eyes, the Holy Ghost says, even the face. Somebody, there was a mask covering your face. He's in the face area, your mask. The mask that was covering your face, you're unveiled. You're not unveiled as the thing was not just taken off as somebody is taking it off. It was peel off. Like, phew, it just dropped off. Like a woman put on a mask and then, uh, how did it, not mask, a peel. And then they just wholly like ripped it off. 
that it, it's talking about you being able to understand the word differently. It's talking about you being having acceptance because when you have that dirty mask in your face, rejection is common. So when the mask is peeled off, then you begin to get acceptance. What a great, great, great deliverance that is in the name of Jesus. Yes, skill just fell off ice. Mask has been ripped off. Places where you were rejected or you begin to be accepted. Oh, I can hear that clearly. You'll be accepted. You'll be accepted. Oh, you'll be accepted. Acceptance. Last week, he talked about promotion and the, the, the testimonies of promotions I heard this week. I was like, whoa. And I had to get in his presence on Friday aggressively. I said, daddy, this is not happening. I'm not going to stay in the midst of everybody being promoted and I'm not promoted. And I refused. And I mean, eight for eight hours. Eight hours. I was in a revelation for eight straight hours. He showed me things one after the other. Most of them were my personal lives. I might not share them, but I'm telling you, I was also promoted, but spiritually. I can tell you I was promoted spiritually. It's not even a doubt because from Friday to today, I know I am not in the same room. Even I didn't know this was going to happen. I was coming to teach and he showed up. That's a confirmation to us that there was promotion released in this family last week. My came in the realms of the spirit. I want you not to let that word go. If you didn't see promotion in any area or all areas of your life, praise him. He's not short in supply. People got promoted like crazy. Last week, I got the testimony. And if you hadn't shared your testimony, you're not doing yourself a, a favor. Share it right here or you can, no, don't text me. It's too late to give it private. Make it public. And those who share their testimonies with me, you can go ahead and share with the family so they can understand every time the word comes. Don't be lazy with your word of prophecy. War it. I was almost just saying, I'm expecting, Lord, I'll get promotion in the name of Jesus. When I was praying on Monday, I said, I thank you for promotion. That's all I was saying. Then it was Friday and I'm like, I'm not seeing promotion. And I'm not going to sit here. And I got aggressive in the spirit Thursday night, breaking uh, Friday and the whole Friday. I could not even study because I was so weak from those revelations. For those of us following the daily devotion and studying Daniel, you will get, very soon we'll get there. You see how Daniel, when he will receive revelation, he will be so weak. I used to read it and say, why will he be weak? Until my encounter on Friday, I understood that there's a level of the anointing that comes upon you that makes your flesh cool. I could not even stand up. I could not even eat. I literally was praying for a little bit of strength to just go drink tea. Listen, we're in a very good place in the Lord. Don't take these things for granted. I don't have time to play games. It will not even with my own self. So I won't sit here and tell you what I'm not hearing. Why am I saying this thing? I'm saying them because we are right here at promotion. I think that word is still very good in the next week coming. I can say it is still a now word for the view household. It's a season of promotion. That promotion can come in any form. When I pressed in, mine was spiritual. Don't just sit and, and think that they are, they are to hype you. No, I've watched the, the, the something you read your Bible, you will see that in every family, in every community, they are always what the Bible will call the mixed multitude. Those who don't care, they just they just walk around strolling. I've watched people in this Bill family, the word that are given on this platform. Some people will take it and they will war with it. Some people you come to the to the family meeting on Sunday and you go back, it's life as usual, and you think you will see miracles. No, no, mm -mm. you have to war. I told you I had to war with the prophecy. It doesn't matter if it came through me. If I didn't war with it, I wouldn't see it. On Friday, I war, and tomorrow I'm still warring. Now that I'm hearing, I can hear daddy say that the word is still good. Watch. Watch what will happen. I am going to war with that word and I'm going to bring my testimonies. Yes, testimonies. Because that is not short in supply. He's not. Amen. 
One thing I would tell us and tell us clearly almost every time is the power of focus and the strength of distraction. When the enemy wants to get you out of alignment, he will bring people into your life. He will begin to bring thoughts. You can sit there and begin to think, oh my goodness, how will this promotion happen? How can I get promoted? Listen, it, it, it's not about your thinking. It's not about your feeling. It's about receiving the word and warring with the word. Congratulations, Miss Novelet. Miss Novelet has been without a real job for a long time. For her to have a job, that was a serious breakthrough. And I also know of so many of you that shared your testimony. It's not time to shout. Share it with the family. Amen. Is Amy online? Amy, tell the family what the Lord did with you in your job. Tell everyone. Mr. Scott, I know what happened. Mr. Scott's car got totally, totally renovated. Almost every part is new. For less than the cost, he could have done it if he was not warring with the prophecy. Now, it's your choice. Amen? But I'm telling you, I will testify by fire, by force. I must testify it's my season of promotion in my finance in in my revelation of the word in in my spiritual life all of it the revelation of the word pressing in tongues everything spiritual and in my finances and in quality relationships i want some great women of god to People that are following him with a pure heart to partner with us. We we be a blessing to their ministry and they what? They be a blessing to you. Yes, it's daddy's will for us to be in covenant relationship with better relationships in the kingdom. Amen. So that's what I, I want us to know for this first session. Uh, um, what a time of worship and prophecy and everything that daddy has done. We are so grateful. Let's lift up our voices and our hands again and say, thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you for all you've done this session. Thank you for all you, you, you've talked, you've done. Thank you for the words that has come forth. Thank you for the testimonies. We are so grateful. Even if it was one testimony, you did well, Father, but you did more than one. <laughs> Yes, he did more than one. So many testimonies. We thank you for every one of them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let me say something. When you come to Relationship Institute by yourself, you're not doing the kingdom a favor. Relationship Institute is where people, the things, that, the, things the quality of what we learn at Relationship Institute it's not only for your personal consumption. If you believe what I'm saying, say true, true or false. The quality of what daddy gives to us is not only for your personal consumption. That's why if you're on Facebook right now, share the link. For everyone on Facebook, share the link on Facebook. It's not about, I don't, I don't care how many, oh, you already know. When we started this evening, when we started worshiping, we were less than five. And we still worship in quality. It's not about me. It's not about getting people to come make me feel. No, I don't feel nothing. It's an assignment. My mind is brainwashed. I am so, my mind is washed from junk. I am not moved by how many people are connected or not. The purpose from my heart is because I know the quality of what daddy brings to us. And if you think it's quality enough for you, why not invite other people? Share it on your WhatsApp uh, groups. Let people make the decision not to come up. But do yourself a favor and help somebody learn how to do relationships right and better. Amen? Amen. So now we're going to be looking at the cost of relationships. Because there are people you pay too much for relationships that are bringing you down. You're paying too much for relationships that are hurting you the most. And there are some people who don't have a clue what the cost they are paying is. The thing is okay. What they are doing is okay. Meanwhile, it's hurting them and it's hurting the people they are paying the price too. All right, let me go to the announcement before I teach. I'm almost teaching before the announcements.
Amen. So the first announcement tonight is that the firms, excuse me, we launched our bill, um, so winning agenda for 2019. And there are a few things that I would like to repeat. The first one is we have forms. We have accountability forms. We have forms for you to um, write the names of the people you will want to, to see. Save this year. Expectation forms. All of those forms are going to be on our platform. They were sent to our web men. They should be on the website right now, if not before the end of this session or at least by tomorrow. He didn't communicate if he has put them on yet. Yeah, let me check just one minute. I hope he did not when I was in here. He might have communicated why I'm, okay. I guess he has. I'm seeing a few texts from him. Oh, it is done. All right. Thank God. See, the Holy Ghost is so good to me. Yes. So all um, the forms are online under the upcoming event in the list of upcoming events. Click on Operation View So Winning Agenda 2019 then you will download the forms. That's how you will get the forms. Miss um, Miss Abo, put it in your, your announcement. Go to, please, Novlet or anyone in blue, share the link to our website. For those who are not familiar with the website, please stop by the website. There are good things there. We do update it. This year, we've made a promise to update that website as soon as we need to update it. Weekly, monthly, we will be doing that. When there are changes, I'll always let us know. So the web person has sent this communique. He said, go to the website, click on upcoming events. And then when you click on upcoming events or on that upcoming event, you will click on Operation Bill So Winning. Operation Bill So Winning Agenda 2019. Then you'll be able to download all the forms. The forms are there. Miss Novelet did a great job designing them. Let's clap for her one more time. She's a blessing. I would also like for us to clap for our web men. They are all a blessing. You all are a blessing. Amen. I want you to give a pat on your back. Glory to God. Give a pat on your back for being a blessing, not only to, to this household, but a blessing to the kingdom of God. In, in whatever capacity you're serving at your church, in your family, it's a blessing. So that's, that's the first announcement. Number two, the bill certification, the leadership certification registration is, is closed. It's technically closed. It was closed on the 15th. And um, because the 15th was a weekend, if you were thinking to register, we will give you a few more days. We will give you up to the 28th. That's for those who are here. But on the platform, it is closed. If you know somebody that really want to be the minister of the gospel, a teacher of the world, they want to be part of that leadership certification, please tell them if you know them. And Oh, unfortunately, we only have one space. I have to say that. We only have one space left. So whoever wants to join, we have five registered candidate ready to go so whoever you you're talking with let them know it's not a matter of let me think about it but definitely it's good for them to think about it that's what i'm saying don't let they should not pull their leg as to we're going to be waiting we just have one more space open we already have five remember it's for six people um the reason is because it's intense and i'm going to be involving their lives personally individually personal levels so i cannot do more than six Plus, BBI is in session. So that certification, technically, registration is closed. But if you know someone dear to you or you are here and the Lord has been speaking and you're like, oh, my goodness, now nah, it's closed. No, it's open for you until the 28th. I'm not sure why 28th, but we'll just go by the spirit. The bill fund, the location fund is still online. Do well to be a blessing. Amen. Um. Now, I know most of you must have won souls. If not, you've been praying for souls. Now, send the names. As soon as you win a soul, send the names to the Bill family member. Bill has a, a platform for service. 
there's a platform for service open i'm not sure why we announced it we don't announce things like this but i'm not sure why daddy wants us to do it this way but if there's somebody willing to be in charge of build evangelism the evangelism team the soul winning what is your function your function is to put together the list of everybody that is one within the week you just compile that list no miss novel cannot do that she has so much to do already no there's no deadline for bill funds bill funds are open there's no deadline it's open and and anytime we'll always have that phone open it, it the day we declared it open it's open forever it's not going to close so whenever you have your phones send them in um go to the was uh, um the website send it through the cash app send it through the paper send it through anything those that are out of the country if you send it through West thing you through moneygram moneygram is the cheapest from what i understand moneygram is the cheapest so send the names in we we'll need somebody to that's your job you just compile the list of so that i want and when people begin to send in the names of their contacts all you need to do is know how to do excel have a spreadsheet put those names together one of the things i will tell you i have watched here at bill it's every time you sell the law rewards you right away oh i'm telling you miss novelet the whole week she was working on the form she started working on the form last week and boom promotion right promotion not only for her but for her whole household the web person will tell you every time he adds a form every time he does a correction on the web before he turns around there's a testimony now it's not peculiar only to our platform i'm just explaining to us papa says it all the time your your, your dominion your place of promotion it's in service i do it I'm telling you, if I had my way, I would do all the service here at Bill, but that would be selfishness because the Lord has not called me by myself. He, he, he has to talk to me sometimes and say, this is not your assignment. Give it to this person because they need to be blessed as well. When you understand these things, when you're spiritually intelligent, some of these things will not even uh, take you by, by, by surprise. You will not be unaware. I am aware of these things and I do them. So let's make sure that we are focused. Let's make sure that we're doing it for the king intentionally, knowing that the reward comes from him. Amen. You can do it on the bill platform, but the reward will come from him. All right. Somebody was telling me that they are so expectant. They are waiting for the bill uh, um, uh, um, fasting. No volume. Is that true? Somebody say no volume. Anyone has a challenge with volume? Please let me know or help collect out. Do you have volume, please? Let us know if you have volume. No volume or yes volume? Volume is okay. I have volume. Yes volume. Okay. Collect, check your device or, or disconnect yourself and come back. All right. So I was about to tell us that um, you can take out your calendar. Bill fasting days are already marked out. For those who want to plan, those who want to know, listen, we've got these things are powerful. Fasting is not a child's play. It's a kingdom principle. It's a kingdom lifestyle. At Bill for Global, Bill Bible Institute, Bill Bible Institute, fasting is a whole topic by itself because it's a principle. It's a pillar in the kingdom. You don't play with fasting. So we already had our February fasting. I'm still doing the announcement. Our March fasting is going to be for five days. Yes, in March we're not doing three days. We go by the spirit. Our March fasting is going to start. Um on wednesday yes it's starting wednesday which is uh, february 27 march fasting start wednesday february 27 28 and then first second and third of february so our fasting in february actually start at the end as um, our fasting our march Fasting starts in February, February 27 to March 3rd, February 23rd, 
February 27 until March 3rd. February 27 to March 3rd. Mark it on your calendar. This is not just excitement. It's so you can get yourself ready. Amen. All right. April fasting. I want I'll give you until I don't know if it's until May or June. Let me see how long I want to give you. Okay, I'll give you until May. All right. April fasting. Our April fasting is starting April the 3rd, which is a Wednesday. April 3rd, the 3rd, the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, and the 7th, five days. Fasting for April 2019 is Wednesday the 3rd, the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, and the 7th. That's for April. Now you're wondering, listen, any life, any time you don't schedule, Will be wasted in your own life. You can testify that the days you get up and start your day with daddy praying and studying the word, you get you you do what you will always have a more productive and fruitful day. But the days you get out and say, Oh, I just need to run and get some dollars, you realize that your life will be more miserable, you'll be less stable, you'll be everywhere else. It's the same thing. When you schedule these fastings, you schedule these days of empowerment, spiritual empowerment, you will be you will realize that you begin to have more productivity from your month. The month will be more productive. You look at your, you will like your life. A lot of people don't like their lives because they are not investing in their lives. All right, for me, fasting starts on the first, the first of May which is a Wednesday, 1st, 2nd, and then 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and the feet, five days. 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, feet. Amen? All right, so mark your calendars. That's May fasting. Put it. Somebody was telling me, oh, I can't wait for the fast. I'm like, who, who told you daddy has already planned the fast already? So I felt like we should, I was thinking to give you the calendar, Put it on your calendar so you don't don't say, oh, I had a family meeting. I had a traditional meeting. You know, people will give excuses, dumb excuses. I mean, sometimes I ask myself, do you know the importance of your spiritual life? Do you know if you're not spiritually available, no matter what you do in the soul will not profit anybody? It's the flesh. It will be the flesh. The soul without the spirit is flesh. And the truth is that nobody wants your flesh. Nobody wants all your emotions, all your anger and um, being stupid with your words and grumpiness. Nobody wants that. They want you to be there during these three or five days of fasting. And you can drop it to go be with them. They are not having the best version of you. Don't lie to yourself. You know the truth. You know that when you're consecrated, you stay in the world, you're focused, you're busy, especially the kind of fast we have here at View, where we sit down and we structure it for you. We give you scripture to read. We bring, we come online and we strengthen ourselves in the world and in prayers. It's not, it's not just, we don't just throw you out there. You know the importance. You know how beneficial it is. The ball is now in your own side of the court. Schedule your time and participate. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Yes, we don't tell you if you have to not drink, you don't have to do this, but we tell you stay without food and eat food. Stay without physical food and eat the word. That's where our focus is. All right. So um, the next and uh, the next thing on our agenda is prayer for offering. Now, the word the Lord gave me to pray for the offerings tonight is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Powerful scripture. I pray you hear this. You know I don't rush the offering message, right? No, we're not rushing it. Mm -mm. Because your life is the sum total of what you've given. You don't have revelation from the word. It's because you've not given time. Now, when we talk about time, we're not talking about 25 hours a day. You know what I mean? We're not talking about what you don't have. 25 hours a day means you don't have it. We're talking about the time you have, your mornings, or best to your night, whichever is the best time. You know how people say in the world that God's time is the best, as to say when God would do it, it would be the best time. I used it in myself to say, Immaculate, give God the best time. 
Give God your best time. That's what I do. God's time should be the best. God's time in my life should be my best time. Should be the time where I can focus with him. Are we understanding? So whatever that best time is for you, research has shown that most people have control over their day in the morning. That's why come rain, come shine, except it's an emergency. I'm not going to pick my phone in the morning. No, oh, oh, no. My early hours is for me and daddy. I don't care who you are. I don't. I sneak. There are times I sneak out of my bedroom. I'm gone. I used to get in trouble until my husband understood that the only way you can have a wife is to allow her be herself. <laughs> That's a teaching for another day, right? But listen, it's very important to know that the sum total of your life is what you have given. Stop giving pain and pain will cease. And if you've been giving love and all you're receiving is pain, it means you're, you need to learn how to receive. If you've been giving goods to people and you're not receiving, it means you are poor in receiving. And one of these days will show you how to receive. Amen? All right. That scripture says, and God is able. My goodness. If you're reading, because you're reading from your Bible, underline it. God is able. In my Bible, it's underlined. Able is circled. God is able. God, daddy, is able. Now he's talked he's talk before, he was talking before from verse 1 to verse 8. He's showing them the importance of giving to daddy from your heart. He says every time you want to give purpose from your heart. The reason why men of God coax and, and, and come across as unbanded on pulpit is because we don't purpose from our heart. So like they say, the birds, because birds have decided to fly and not land, what has happened? Hunters have decided to shoot and not miss. I am not saying that for a man of God to twist your hand, to give money is correct. I'm just saying that if you left home, you have a relationship with daddy. The advantage lives in you. You've spoken with him. He's a Holy Ghost. My giving life is important. I know the importance of my seed. I know the importance of sowing my seed. What do you want me to give? Not every time he will tell you to give something that will pluck your ears. There are times where he will stretch you, but there are times where he will tell you um, $25 is okay today. $50 is fine. There are times when he will tell you $1,000 and you're like, oh, let me get a retreat before I give this one. Because if I give it, I'll give it in the flesh. Yes. But what will it profit you to keep an offering and eat it and be at, at a place of two more? When you should have just put it in an offering basket and be at peace. We talked about clothes last week. The Lord is saying you have too many clothes. You have too many shoes. Begin to sew them out. Or you don't have enough. And he said well, the only way to get is to give. So begin to give some of the clothes that you think they are the best. So you can have that quality. Because every seed produced after its kind. So you see from verse 1 to verse um, 7. He's talking about how to give. Give from your heart. Don't give grudgingly. Purpose. Set aside what you want to give for your offering. He showed them all of that. And then now in verse 8, he said, why are you going to purpose to do those things? Why are you going to give from your heart? Why are you not going to allow people to push you? Because if people are pushing you to give, they will have to go push you to reap. They will have to go push people to give to your life. Are we understanding? That's why you don't allow a man or woman of God to coax you into giving. Because they will have to go coax the people that will give to you to give to you. Are they able to do that? No. You and I know the answer is no. But when you choose from your heart and say, Daddy, this is what I want to give to you. You're so faithful. I drive to work every day and I pass accidents. I could have been one of those, but you preserved me. You took me safely. I passed so many cops. They could have stopped me. I was even trying to speed, but you, you told me not to speed. I could have paid tickets. Of 200 300 dollars, but you gave me the wisdom to slow down. And when I slow down, wh why will I not be appreciative of you, Father? Look at my children. I have heard about my neighbors taking their children to the ER. They spend their gas, they spend their time, they spend everything. But you have preserved me, you've given me peace. My children are at home. They some people, their children have to go change their glasses every month. Daddy, you've you've given my children sight. Daddy, I have a bed to sleep. There are people who don't have rent. They are, they are on the trees. Lord, you've given me a home. I don't need to buy six blankets to cover myself because there's light and there's, there's heat in my house. 
Daddy, I'm grateful. Because of that, Daddy, I'm going to give you $50. Daddy, I'm going to, after you tithe on your offering, I'm not talking about your tithe on your offering. Your tithe on your offering don't belong to you. I'm talking about your giving now. Above and beyond your tithe and your offering. Father, my, 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 my pastor, my man, my woman of God, Lord, look at how much they are investing in the word and they are teaching me. Father, I, I, Father, I have made up my mind that I'm going to put my pastor, I'm going to put my woman of God on $50 every paycheck. I'm going to give my woman of God every paycheck. I'm going to give her $10, $25. I'm going to give her $1,000. Daddy, help me. This is my desire. And you begin to do it. That is where you will reap the most. It's not when you go to, to a crusade and you appear there and you, they, they suddenly say, give this money and you give it. That's where the, the, the blessing can come from that. But look at the word. Verse 7, we can look at verse 7 before we go to verse 8. It said, let every man give as he has purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Do you know? That if you send Miss Emma $50 because you have just sat in your home and you say, look at how much my life has changed. Hey, this woman deserves to go get a new lipstick. This woman deserves to go get a dinner with her family. And you send me $50. The Lord will appreciate that more than if I came here and I begin to tell you, oh, the Lord said, oh, if you sow into my life tonight, you're going to get a million dollar in return. Oh, and I do all the dramas, right? And then at the end of the day, you go so $1,000. Do you know that if I did that thing from my flesh, there are times when that could be coming from the spirit of God. There are times. But if I did that from the flesh and you sowed that seed, do you know this uh, at least 70% probability you will not reap? But do you know that $50 that you sold because you, you evaluated your life, you look at it, you're doing it from a place of appreciation. Do you know that that seed you will reap? Oh, no, you will reap every time, anytime from a seed like that. Purpose from your heart and do it and see what daddy say he will do. Verse 8, God is able to make, God is able to make what? All grace abound towards you. That word abound is big. It's like God is going to make sure that every kind of thing that you need will come to you plenty. It will not just come small. It will not just come in less quality. For example, you sow the $50 from a heart of appreciation. That is going to make sure that if there's a healing that your child needs, that child is not just going to be healed. He's going to give that child the antibodies that will make sure that that illness will not come again. All grace abound towards you. A child that is at school, they need help with understanding chemistry, math, and you're sowing that seed or you're giving that offering in appreciation. God is going to look at your life. He said he's able to make all grace abound towards you. Meaning what? He's going to look into your life. He says, let's read. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance forever to do every good work. That is too deep. I'm not sure I will have to, if we go into it deeper, we're not going to go. But this is what he told me to tell you. That I am able to make all grace abound towards you. So for everyone that gave this week, we're going to come back to the scripture. I can sense we're going to come back to it. It's deeper than we have seen. For everyone that gave in this week, I pray for you that every grace that you need will abound towards you. That every kind of seed you sow into the Bill's household, that that grace that you need will abound towards you. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that the abounding grace will be released upon every family member that sowed prayers, that so many seed, that so love towards the Bill household, that thought about Bill with a good heart. I pray that that grace, abounding grace, will come towards them, rush towards them, 
in the name of Jesus. Daddy said, I am able. I am able. Oh, he is able to make all grace abound towards you. He is able. He's able. That word able, powerful. It's not limited. So it leaves us with the responsibility of obedience. Are we going to say, I'll do my part? And then when you say that and then you do it, then he is able. He's able to make all grace abound towards you. Amen? Yes, he is. He is very able to make all grace abound towards you. Glory to that. In Jesus' name. Amen? All right. Now, the next thing I want us to talk about is our soul winning declaration. This week, somebody type it in. We will put it online. Um, even as we're talking, that's right. The Lord just reminded me and somebody just did it. If you're online and you didn't sow and you want to sow into this word, please feel free and go online and sow a seed. The amount is not what it is. It's the obedience to the word. Now you know that God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Go online and sow your seed. And go to our website. Somebody share the website link and send in your offering. And make sure you see where the offering is going. I will say this and I keep saying it to the Bill household. When you it's a prophetic offering, it's coming to me. It's going to my personal needs. Say prophetic offering. It's going to, it's your tight and your offering. Say tight and offering. If it's the building project in particular, especially the building project fund, please, I beg you. Level it times two. Put stars on it. Building fund. But that is completely. You can even send a prophetic seat. It's mine. It goes to the tithe and offering. That will be fine. But please do us the help us with that. It's a blessing. So make, make it a blessing throughout. Every time you send on, on cash app, just put the memo. Put the memo that it is for... Uh, um, the prophet, it is for the building project. It is for tithe and offering. Do that. Amen. Um, don't relent. Yes, I was going to talk about our our uh, um, prophet soul winning declaration for the week. And then I just saw that somebody did exactly what the Lord was telling me. Every time we come here and the offering message is going on and you want to sow a seed, go ahead and sow it. Sow it through our website. You'll be blessed. Amen. Use the cash app. Use um, the paper. And don't do it just because I said so. Do it because you have an understanding of the power of a seed. When the Lord speaks to me about a seed, I don't need to console anybody. I do it because I have seen it. It works all the time. Amen. All right. So our, our soul winning declaration for this week is soul winning declaration number five. Can somebody type it in for me? So winning declaration number five. So winning declaration number five. I want to pull it up from my, um, what do we call it again? So winning declaration number five. Okay, here we go. So winning declaration number five says, I am God's hand and I rescue from hell. I am God's hand of rescue from hell i am god's hand and i rescue from hell now as you go yes so winning declaration number five that's what we're declaring this week please make sure that when before you go out declare it every day you get up in the morning you say daddy please i am your rescue hand for today rescue someone from hell from my hand when you begin to make daddy know you are available then he will use you then he will do it through you. But when you don't make him know you're available by your declarations, then he will not know you're available. The angels will need someone to rescue someone from hell. And they will hear you say it. And then they will do what? They will position you. The angels need your words to work with you. The Holy Ghost needs your word to work with you. Amen? So do it this week. Somebody post it on the Bill platform, the relationship platform. Post it there that our declaration for the week is declaration number five. 
this week before you go out make that declaration it's okay to do all of those declarations every day but for the week we're going to pick one that will focus on he laid it on my heart i didn't even know what number five was but he told me he said for this week is so winning declaration number five we are god's hand of rescue from hell let's pray father in the name of jesus declare with me i am your hand of rescue from hell this week daddy rescue from hell from through me rescue destinies from hell through me rescue someone from hell through me in jesus name amen Yes, don't let your mind begin to go wild and say, you've never won a soul. Huh, is it this week you're going to start? No, speak it with your mouth. There is power in a made up mind and there's power in, in, in when you speak. Speak it every day. Even if at the end of the week you don't see one soul yet, keep speaking it. This thing will change your destiny. I'm telling you, as you begin to speak and, and begin to confess your soul winning declarations, before you know it, you will be a soul winning machine because your own mind is being shifted. Your mindset is shifting. Before you realize it, you'll begin to bring people your way. And listen, you can only be a blessing as much as you have made up your mind to be. You are already blessed. You are a blessing. But as you begin to work on your mind to adjust and to align, you begin to see that. Amen? All right. That will be it before our teachings. We're about to get into our teachings. I want us to pray for the word that is coming forth. It is coming with understanding. It's coming with illumination. It is coming with impartation. It's coming to transform your life. It's coming to give you the strength that you need the, to pay the cost for quality relationships. Yes, your, your insurance is available. Yes, your insurance is available. Your insurance is available, but you have to pick it up. You have to pick it up. Oh, yes, you have to pick it up in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Madam Ta. That's great. So everybody, you do your declaration every morning before you step up. Do it before you go to bed. Let your mind be consumed with your declarations. Amen. And don't deceive yourself. These things will come to pass. They might take some time, but they will come to pass. Just like every seed will take a little bit of time, but they will come to pass. So tonight, we're looking at relationship health insurance, the cost, the price. Amen? Three, number three. Um, no, 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 four. Relationship health insurance, number four, dash, the price. Now, a lot of people don't believe it, that we get what we sow, or we should be reaping what we sow. I put it should because sometimes, or I was on the other side. Sometimes we sow and we don't watch for the harvest. Even with you and your husband, if you're married to a woman or a man, that they keep demanding and demanding and pulling and pulling from you. You need to come to a place where you ask yourself, the price I am paying for this marriage is it reflecting in what I am getting back? Miss Ima, it sounds selfish. No. That is when you want to have a healthy relationship. You have to evaluate that relationship from time to time. I'm going to this particular congregation. I am sowing my time. I am sowing my services in the health department, in, in hospitality. I'm being the, the women's leader. I'm being the men's leader. I'm being the children's leader. I am sowing my time into this ministry, into this, into this uh, um, assignment. What am I reaping? Because if you don't do those evaluations from time to time, I'm teaching my children. I mean, with children, we can take it with a pinch of salt because sometimes they will act crazy, but they will align. But you have to ask yourself, am I seeing results? Is there an assurance from the Lord that the investment I'm investing in my children will bear fruit? Yes, the Bible says that. So as for you and your children, it's right there, clear. But why keep having friends 
that keep wanting you to pay the cost of going to all the family meetings, all the baby shower, all the jange meetings. And every time you come back from there, you have to, it feels like you, you, you have to rewind your spirit man to come up and for you to begin to run and walk with the Lord. How much, what, what is that price? That is too costly. That's too expensive. During the fasting, we heard the Lord say it clearly, distraction, distraction, distraction. And he showed us that vision of the friends that pulled each other away. And the rapture came. The Bible is clear. He said two will be lying on the same bed. And I've said that is husband and wife. That's not coded language. And I know, even if it's coded language, I know in the Bill house, who, who, sisters don't lie with men that they are not married to. So I can say that with confidence that it is talking about married people. It's a two will be lying on the same bed and one will go and the other will be left. What is that saying? It's telling you clearly that husband and wife, there will come a time when somebody will be serious and somebody will not. And that's not an excuse to backslide because your husband or your wife is slowing down. If there's any reason you need to fire up, Miss Gloria said double up. When you double up, your fire might burn the demons that is trying to consume the other person. Might. I said might. Because there are some people that will willfully participate with demons. No matter how hot you are around them, they don't care. And in that case, if you keep sitting there and thinking that your fire will bring them, you, 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 before you realize it, you will go to all the Njange meetings, you go to all the country meetings, and before you know it, the whole family will begin to go to those meetings to the point where you come back at 3 a.m. and you will not be able to make it to church, and you become a sacred to the point where you begin to die spiritually. Before you know it, Njange meeting will be more important than going to church on time. Jange meetings will be more important than doing the will of God for your life. And let me shock you. In heaven, you're not answering for your husband. He's not answering for you. Miss Ima, I'm going to get a divorce. That's the very reason you will get a divorce. Because when you make the Lord, the Lord of your home, even if the enemy comes to fight, he will realize that he cannot divide that home because the father-in-law of that home is both the devil and God. And we know who wins. But if you begin to say, I'm so scared. I just have to follow my wife to that country meeting. I have to follow my husband to that baby shower. I have to follow my sisters. I have to follow my friends. You know, if I don't go to um, that baby shower, if I don't go to, to their birthdays, when I have a birthday, they will not come. Before you know it, the fire of God upon your life is dying down. Those same people, I will shock you. They like you because of the qualities of the word of God that is in you. Mm-hmm. That's why they want to be your friend. And by the time you begin to allow the fire to die down, those same people will kick you out because you'll become so grumpy. You'll become so nagging. you become so silly. And they'll be like, we don't like you in a circle. Why? The, the very thing that brought you into their presence, the glory of God has departed. And then you are Ichabod. And what would they do with Ichabod? They Ichabod you. They send you away. All right, that was introduction. Let's go into the scriptures. What is this cost? What is the price? What is the price you need to pay for a healthy relationship? It's an insurance. We're getting an insurance from the world. We want to get scriptures from the world. We want to look into the word of God and gain information, gain understanding, gain revelation on how to live with people in such a way that the word of God becomes our insurance. And this price, it's not something anybody can pay for you. The price for this insurance, nobody's going to pay for you. You're going to pay it with daddy. Are we understanding? Please, if you're understanding, say understanding. I have at least 12 people online. If you're following, say I am following. Because there's no need teaching the whole world when at least a life is not changed. I will go with three, five, six lives being changed than the whole world being online are not doing different. Amen? Please let me know how many people are following me and understanding. There is a price. There is a price. Don't lie to yourself. You've been hurt in relationships. You've been hurt by people. Why? Because you're not, you're not paying the price. You're not paying the price for healthy relationships. 
Everything goes. You talk with everyone on the phone. Anybody can call you at any time and it's okay. Anybody can tell you anything and it's fine. And you become a jellyfish and you're swimming down the stream. Anything can break you. Because jellyfishes that swim down the stream don't have a backbone. And if you don't have a backbone, anything can break you. That's why we're looking at the price tonight. What do I need to pay to have quality, healthy relationship? Number one, knowledge. Please type that for me. Number one, knowledge. One is knowledge. The price you will need to pay is knowledge. You will need to know what a quality, healthy relationship looks like for you. According to the word of God. According to the word of God, knowledge. Remember where we've been studying? Look, chapter six. I've heard so many testimonies about relationship health insurance. I've, I've, I've had outstanding testimony. Somebody, they told, I got one this afternoon. Somebody who decided, say, I'm going to pay the price for my health, relationship health insurance. And at the end of the day, all of their bills were paid because they choose to pay the price. They got the knowledge and they choose to do it. Knowledge in this case is not just knowledge as to I know it. Knowledge as to I'm doing it. Meaning knowledge from the point of just knowing it or knowledge as to knowledge to the point of wisdom, practicing, doing it. All right. Relationship insurance. Luke chapter 6, reading from verse 27. It says, I say to you, who can hear? I say to those that can listen. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Stop. Miss Ima, love my enemy. What are you talking about? You're talking about loving the witch? Talking about the person that has been so doing evil to me? Yes. First Corinthians chapter 13. I'm saying gain knowledge. Knowledge, right? First Corinthians chapter 13. I want everyone to, you see, I'm not reading on the screen like we used to do. Read from your Bible. Please own a Bible. It is so profitable. Own a Bible. I don't care how the enemy fight. I will buy a Bible every week if that's what it takes. I will not read from the screen. I will read from a Bible. First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. That's what it means. So let's bring it back into Luke. Bring 1 Corinthians 13 into Luke. It says what? Be patient. Be kind to your enemies. How does it look like to be patient with my enemies? The reason why we suffer a lot in our relationships is because as soon as somebody does something bad, you're so quick to respond. Oh, you said that about me. Oh, you did that to me. Oh, you did that. Mm -mm. No, not, not Luke. We're not in Luke 26. Luke 6. Luke 6, 27. Did I say 26? That's my mistake. Luke chapter 6, verse 27. Luke chapter 6, verse 27. Yeah, we've been in this scripture for a while, right? So most of you should have underlined some places already. Luke 6, 29, 27. We're reading from verse 27. That should be a mistake. I apologize. Luke 6 from verse 27. He said, love. When people make you mad, what do you do? When people say lies about you, what are you going to do? You're going to be patient and you're going to be kind. Do you know why people go around with sicknesses and diseases? Some of them are incurable. The root of it is unforgiveness. The root of it is impatient with people that have made you mad. You're unkind to them to the point where it's affecting you. You drop your insurance. And you're paying a higher price. If you will pay the price of knowledge, you pay the price of understanding what the word requires from you to the point of wisdom to do it. This health insurance is cheaper. 
is less costly. It will make you not lose relationships as quickly as you do. Now, we need to bring in the balance. We're not talking about you staying with people that you know are hurting you, people that are speaking wrong and evil about you and God. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the sister at church that is gossiping and lying about you. You know they are truly born again, but they are just challenged with their mouth. We're talking about your husband or your wife that is saying some things about you they ought not to be saying. We're talking about that child that has chosen to be rebellious for a while. Be patient with them. Be kind to them. Yes, the enemy is using them, but that's not where our focus is. Our focus is to stay in health. Our focus is to be healthy spiritually. Do you know every time you don't forgive, you pollute your own spirit? And when your spirit is polluted, it affects your soul. And when your soul is polluted, it affects your body. Do you know to be kind and patient to somebody is first of all healthy for you? That's the truth. Everything daddy tells us to do is for our good. Somebody type that in for me. Everything daddy asked me to do is for my good. Anything daddy will ask you to do, daddy does it himself. Do you know daddy is patient and he's kind? That's the truth. That's why he can have a relationship with you. How many times have we done the things he said not to do, but he will still be patient and kind? Am I saying make friends with mediocres? No. I'm saying be considerate. Number two, there are people you will meet in life that are going through some challenges. They say hurting people hurt, right? And if somebody is hurting you, mean, mean they are hurting because somebody has hurt them. And if you choose to go along hurting other people, means you're reaping the fruit that they sowed somewhere. Because they refuse to do their homework, to gain the knowledge. So they don't do their assignment. Now they are hurting because they have refused to forgive. And then now you will pick what they did to you and you're running with it. You're participating in their fruits. What is that like, Miss Ima? You go to work. Your boss had a challenge with her husband. And she came to work and she is so mean. And she has refused to forgive her husband because she's forgiven her, forgiven her husband 25 times already, right? And she's so mad at me. And you, instead of walking on your heart and say, Lord, I choose to be kind to my boss. I choose to be patient with this woman. I choose to love her. Meaning what? Patient and kind. Everything else that it says in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 from there, is great. But just if you will just focus on being patient and kind by the Holy Ghost, you will see so much deliverance in your walk with the Lord and in your relationships. So you have known that the Lord is not expecting you to be mad with people to the point of unforgiveness. I don't care who they are. They don't deserve staying in your heart. I don't care who they are. They don't deserve causing you cancer. I don't care who they are. They are not worthy for you to go to hell for them. If you're online listening to me and there's somebody you need to forgive, forgive them now. The grace is available. Yes, they spoke about you. Yes, they took your children from you. Yes, they took your husband from you. Yes, the fiancé you were supposed to marry, they took from you. You are alive. Daddy is able. I feel like teaching next week teaching. The price. There is a price, people. There's a price when you forgive somebody. There's a price when you choose to show mercy. That's next week. Oh, it's so good. Health insurance, five, dash, the price. The price there is the one with the Z. What you get? Man, you see it in verse 20, verse 35 and 36. It feels like skipping there because that's a sweet part. Sweet part meaning I understand that this cost is, is expensive. But if you compare it with the diseases you will get from unforgiveness, and the great relationship you might lose just because you're not patient and you're not kind, it's, it's cheaper. It's cheaper to pay this price. It's less expensive to pay. Yes, do good for my good. That's right. Do good for your good. I'm telling you it's for your good. Now, the balance with this is that if you have somebody in your life that keeps bringing you pain. It is stupidity. This one, you don't need knowledge. You don't need a revelation. It is stupidity to keep exposing yourself to that person. 
You have to just even, you don't need revelation. You don't need the word of God. You just need to know that this person, as close as they may be, they bring so much pain. I will schedule my life so that we only deal on things that is important. For example, if you are divorced, if you're separated, if you're in the process of separation and you know your spouse is toxic, they don't like Jesus. They can go to church all the one. They can even be an apostle. They can be an archbishop. But you know they don't leave the word of God. You know they are so cruel to people. You know they only deal with people for what to get and take. You cannot sit there as a child of God and deceive yourself that you're going to have a one-on-one a -on -one deep fellowship relationship with this person. It's not going to work. You know it. What do you do? You make sure that you're patient with them you're kind with them. What is it practically? If they need help and you have help, give it to them. Don't say they did pain. I can't give them help. No, you're not being Christian because if you read down to the price. You see that our daddy does the same. What do you do? You get to a point. <laughs> is that my aunt? <laughs> welcome, mama. Please welcome my <laughs> Welcome, my aunt online. Welcome, Mama. Good to see you. Welcome, fa please, family. May welcome my mother. Comfort for Vinian. Please, family. Yes, forgive them. Let, they, let it go. Nobody's worth going to hell for. All of that pain is not necessary. If you're at the point of a divorce or you've divorced, you've separated, the first thing you want to do is. Take care of your soul. Take care of, if there were children between you, you're not responsible for that man. You're responsible for the children. You're responsible for the children. You have a responsibility as a parent to your biological children. Because that man or that woman, um, we're focusing on the man a little more, but let me bring it so I don't have to do it both sides. That spouse is an adult. They have a decision to make. You cannot live your life in bondage just because that person has decided to go to hell. If you go to hell, it's a choice. There's no human being after Jesus died that will go to hell because they didn't hear about, they didn't know they were going to hell. They will know it and they will make a decision too. And when they make a decision too, you cannot pull them. I'm saying this because it could be somebody could be going through this right now and if you're going through right now this is the now word for you focus on your relationship with the lord number one number two be a responsible parent to your children number three be kind to that person if they need help and you can do the help don't be mean to them don't be a bad person because they make you sad because it costs you sick no don't do that Stay focused on the Lord. That's number one. Number two, be a responsible parent to your children. What is a responsible parent like? A responsible parent is not an enabling parent. Who is an enabling parent? This is more for parents that have children above 16. In the U.S., 18. But in according to, I mean, I have a background in psychology, and I can talk about the brain a little bit. It, when your child is 16, between 16 and 18, they can reason and act as an adult. I've, I've handled a case. If it sounds like your case, please, it's not you. I just want to use this example. If you are at a place where you realize that your child will not do their chores at home, they live with you at home, they won't clean up, and they want you to be a parent, take care of them, but warn them. This relationship has to be healthy. A healthy relationship is I'm a mom and you're a child. And if they cannot be, or oh, I'm a dad and you're a child. I'm a mom and you're a son. I'm a mom and you're a daughter. If you cannot be a daughter, I will stop being a mom someday. You, will, you have to raise the standard. You have to not, you have to, you have to show them how the, you have to educate them on what a healthy relationship is. Exemplify it. And hold them to that standard. Now, for those that are divorced or separated, you have to know for sure that the other person is going to do contrary 
When they know you're the strict one, you're building the children, they're going to start telling the children, oh, your mom or your dad is so strict. He's such a, you see, that's why I separated from her. She's such a bad woman. She's such a demonic man. She's not. No, don't listen to that crap. Stay focused with the word. Do what the word expects of you as a parent and do what the word expects of you as a person, as an individual. And when that spouse separated or divorced need help, do what the word expects of you. Know what your feelings are saying. And know what culture has said. Stay with the word. When you stay with the word, you will never be disadvantaged. You will never be disappointed. You will never be frustrated. You will never be put to shame. It's a matter of time. That's the truth. Amen? So, my scribes are fast. Be a responsible parent. It's, it's still on number one. It could be B on number one. One B. But that's okay. Don't do anything. Leave it like it is. It's fine. Amen? So the knowledge to know exactly what to do with that relationship is very important. Forgiveness is a choice. And my goodness, that thing is a price that will buy so many crazy things you could have been purchasing down the line. When you choose to forgive, it's a price, but it's a lesser price than cancer. It's a lesser price than you letting the ball of, of bitterness roll down to other people's lives and relationships. Understanding? All right, let's, let's make progress. Verse 28, it says, Bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. When you get to a point where it's challenging, you've forgiven them. You say, Lord, I forgive. It means, even how do I forgive practically? Open your mouth. Call their names. And say, Daddy, I choose to forgive Emilia. Father, I choose to forgive Emilia. I choose to forgive Emilia. It's my decision. I make up my mind. Pamela, you are forgiven. From my heart, I forgive you. You cannot stay in my life. And those who know how to pray in tongues, you begin to pray in tongues for Pamela. For those who don't know how to pray in tongues, you begin to say, Lord, bless Pamela. Cause her to see. Because sometimes Pamela hurts you because why? Pamela is hurting. And you begin to, I'm calling random names. So don't, don't if, I hope there's no Pamela listening in the background because we have people that are listening that are ghosts, right? You call that person's name loud to your own hearing and say, I choose to forgive you. Sometimes you're praying for that person because you felt that they, they hurt you. And by the time you finish praying, they lost it. They didn't help you. They didn't hurt you. It was you. You exposed yourself to abuse. Then you'll be like, oh, hold on, Lord. I thought they hurt me. He said they did. But that's because you exposed yourself. So you see the beauty of praying during that process? Because some things will be revealed to you. If they actually hurt you, one of the things you will hear the Lord will say, have mercy. The Lord will say, show mercy on them. Because anybody that hurts a child of God, you're in trouble. Let's look in the natural, mama. If somebody hurt your child, how do you feel? Or that? You want to yank them by the head, right? If you're fleshy, that you want to pull them by the head. Even when you're a spiritual dad, if you're not a restrained person in your spirit, you feel like giving them the five-four ministry or giving them the back of your hand before you're restrained. It's the same with daddy. That's one of the reasons we forgive. And that's one of the reasons we say, Daddy, have mercy. Because when you don't say, have mercy, that person is exposed. The judgment of God will go to them. Oh, I'm telling you. Somebody hurt me once and the Lord told me, he said, if you please Ima, ask for my mercy over that person. He said, because if you don't, and he could, I could see the judgment that was going to go on those people. And he told me, he told me clearly, he said, if you don't ask for my mercy, this is what will happen to that person and this is what will happen to that person. Now, I know what you're thinking. If you're canna, you'll be like, no, let that judgment come. No. You know why? Because if you can forgive somebody that is difficult to forgive, you have sown a big seed of mercy when you will need that kind of forgiveness. I know you say you're very holy, you're perfect. You will never need it, right? But just sow it. So it, even if you never need it, it can become a gem on your crown in heaven. Yes, 
We don't know how those gems are going to be going on those crowns. Every child of God has a crown, but there are gems that are put on your crown. You don't know what daddy will evaluate to put a gem on that crown. Those people that are most difficult, you, there's something out there, a lot of people don't know about it. It's called narcissistic people. Dangerous human beings. And people who do deliverance will tell you that they are, they are human beings Without souls, without without souls, that their heart has been removed by the devil. When you there are so many people married to those people and they don't know it, and you're you're, you're wondering why is my husband like this? Why is my wife like this? Why is it that they, they enjoy when I go through pain? Why is it that they always they they, they like it when they make something and I'm sad? Why, why does it feel like in this marriage, I, 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 when I go through pain, that's when they enjoy? They could be narcissistic. A lot of people think nas are people who are selfish only. No, narcissistic. Google it. You're on YouTube. Just Google the word. Na where's, where's Peggy? Peggy, put the right spelling on, please. If, when you Google and study about these people, you can be scared. There are human beings out there, but their soul has been given to the devil. They don't live like you and I. They don't empathize. So what if you're in a relationship with one of them? They are at work. They're in your families. What if you meet one of them and you choose not to forgive them and you want to join them to go to hell? No. There are people, you could be online, you're married to one of these people, you have no clue. The only way you can know you're married to these people is when you become spiritual and you begin to pray. You will see how they'll begin to react. When you begin to leave your purpose, you begin to see what they will do. You'll be so surprised. Price, knowledge. Pray for them. Because when you pray, things will be open up like this kind of personalities. They'll be open up. Some of you are divorced today because you were married to those people. And God had mercy on you and separated you from them. And you still want to go back to them. Some of you were engaged to people like this. And during the engagement, you say, hey, why is this person behaving strange? You say, if I really marry this person, is this what I'm going to go through? And then the Lord said, no, don't do it, my daughter. Or don't do it, my son. And you run away. I beg you all, we'll, we'll do a, an in-depth teaching on these personalities. Because you have them at work. You have them in your family. Some parents, your children are like that. Some, some women... You're married to men like that. Some men, you're married to women like that. Some parents, your children are like that. And you don't know it. All they want to do is take from you, take from you, take from you. They don't have anything to do with you. No matter what you're going to They don't care. They'll call you on the phone. Mom, I need this. And you think they are normal children. No, they are not. I'm not creating fear. I'm telling you that those are the people you want to forgive quick. Quickly. Because that's the purpose of their living. So you can be angry, you can be so frustrated, you can carry on forgiveness about. And they like it. Because they are demonic, they fit on pain. They fit on, 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 on you going through pain. So you're going to keep giving it to them? No. 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 Amen. So that's why you pray. You pray for those people that are doing pain to your life. You pray so that God will forgive them. One, you pray that God will expose things that are closed. That's the cost. It's costly to take time and pray, especially for somebody that has hurt you. Oh, but I'm telling you, it's cheaper. That price is cheaper than the price of being walk around. You can't even live your life. You can't go sit in a restaurant and eat a good meal just because there's no man to take you to a restaurant. There's no woman. I'm talking to the women or the men. Now you can't go to a restaurant because you don't have a girlfriend or your wife has divorced or separated you. Are you serious? That's how you've devalued your own life. God has given you the money. Take yourself to the restaurant and eat good food. Get a girlfriend. Get a boyfriend. Boyfriend as to a man getting a man friend. And enjoy life. And so what they've dumped you. Are you the first? I know so many people, I'm not encouraging divorce, but I know so many people that have made it in life in their second or their third marriages. You're paying so much. This is a word for somebody. You're paying so much to be in a relationship with somebody that does not value you. You're paying too much. 
The price is too expensive. Drop that relationship. If it's you, take the word and act on it. Now, at Bill, we don't believe in a divorce and we don't believe in abuse. Number two, at Bill, we believe it's less expensive to mend a marriage that is broken, but we also believe that there's a marriage that is broken beyond repair when one person, especially when one has decided that their father is Lucifer, the devil, no matter what you do. The only way they can turn around is if they choose to let go of Lucifer and make Jesus their Lord. If not, you will beat yourself all your life. And even if you're giving the excuse of I bring them into the kingdom, before you pray them into the kingdom, enjoy your kingdom life. Don't be miserable because you're expecting a spouse to come back to the Lord or you're expecting your spouse to give their heart to Jesus. No. Enjoy. Amen. So that's what prayer will do. Um, verse 29. To him who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one. And to him who takes your clothes, do not withhold your tonic either. Now, that, that's too deep, too many things. But the summary of that verse is that if somebody is looking for trouble, don't pay attention. Don't pay attention. Just keep doing what you're supposed to do. Don't pay attention. 23. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your good, do not ask them to bring it back. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I will end at 23, and I'll say a few things, and we'll be out of here. Listen, the cost of a quality relationship, number one, we said, was knowledge. When you know what to do, and you begin to do it, you will realize that it's cheaper to live and interact with people from the word of God, by the word of God, that you want to do it by the way you were brought up, by your tradition. So what are we saying? You have to get to a place where you begin to undo the things that you've been doing that got you into pain. Have you been so needy that sisters that will, will, will want to attract men so bad that you begin to wear things you should not wear. You begin to do things you should not do. You begin to say things you should not say. You begin to act strange. And at the end of the day, you attract the wrong person. And that's a cheaper price you're paying for something that's quality. And before you know it, you get into another pain circle. Another circle of pain. But if you stay with them, carry yourself as a child of the king. Carry yourself as dignity. Carry yourself as a royalty. Carry yourself like who you really are. Before you know, you attract royalties. Will it take time? Of course, no goal is found on the surface. You want to have a quality husband, a quality wife? You have to start by you being quality. That's where it starts. Especially if you're expecting daddy to bring the two of you together. He's not going to bring unequal yoking. He's not going to take his pearl, a man he's trained, and bring to you a woman that has refused to train yourself. Somebody, they say your standards are high. Yes, leave your standard high. There's a man that's looking for a woman with high standard. Worst case. Or best case, not even worse, best case scenario. You go to heaven. There are people in marriages today, they are praying for their spouse to die. Because the, the, the relationship with their spouse bring them pain that they would rather, rather, rather go to heaven or even go to hell than stay in the marriage. It's true. You don't believe me? Do a survey. If people are honest, they will tell you they are in marriages, but they are not enjoying it. They know. They know that this marriage is not like the word of God says. So you who is out there, don't rush in and go join the queue. Take your time. It's very painful when you know that marriage is sweet and then you marry it and you can't enjoy it. It's painful. You waited 20 years, 15 years. You're 35. You've been waiting since you were 20. You say, Lord, I will not defile myself. And then now you rush into something and you, 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 when, you, when you're in there, you, you will cry. You, because you know you paid the price to get the best, but your impatience has taken you out. So number one was knowledge. Number two, the cost of a quality relationship is sleep. Uh -uh, Miss Ima, sleep? Yes, sleep. Sleep as to L, S-L-E-E-P, sleep. Number two, sleep. What do you mean by sleep? A lot of people don't have quality relationship because they are, they are so desperate looking everywhere. I want a man, I want a woman. I want a man, I want a woman. 
At church, what's your problem? What is your problem at church? Yes, sleep has to sleep. We're going to look at it even in the realm of the physical. We're talking now spiritual. You go to church, everybody in your church is not a Christian. Everybody in your church is not a Christian. Not everybody comes to church for Jesus. You've been hurt at church because you want everybody to be your friend. Sleep, go to sleep. Go, go study Genesis chapter 2. You'll see that when God had created everything, it felt like God almost gave Adam a goat to be a wife. Oh, go look at it, you will tell me. Genesis 2, he brought everything to Adam. He said, name them. It felt like daddy was waiting for Adam to say, this goat is my wife. Go look at it again. You see verse 17, he said that for Adam, there was no help man found. Why? The man was alive. The man was not alive. The man was up. He was not sleeping. And daddy finally realized that the medicine for quality relationship is for the man to sleep. Sleep. You do everywhere. Make yourself quality and you attract quality. He had to put Adam to sleep and gave him quality relationship. A woman. And when she came, Adam, whoa, man. Right? A man that has a womb. A man that has something to add. A man that can add to your life. Church is not for Christians. It's for everyone. In your family, we talk about nast. Not everybody in your family is a human being. Take it from me or leave it. Not everybody. Sleep. And to some people, it's literal sleep. Sleep as to physical sleep. You don't have quality relationship because you don't rest. You're on every social media 24-7. I mean, I understand when it's a season. When Bill had to start. And, and when it is a season, you have the grace. You'll not be grumpy. So people don't have quality relationship because you're always grumpy. You don't rest. You watch every YouTube. You watch every Facebook live. To the point where you don't, your mind is not even stable. You don't even know yourself. Because you don't sleep at night. You don't rest. So you see the sleep in the spiritual and the sleep in the soul and the sleep physical. Sleep is a cost. It's a price you pay for relationship. You see your husband, you know why he's grumpy? One of the reasons he's always mad, mean and sad is because he doesn't have quality rest. Begin to schedule him to sleep for eight hours every day or every night. If he works night, make sure that when he comes back in the afternoon, take all his electronics, cause him to sleep. Cause him to rest. And watch what will happen. He will become a better husband. You see those children? They are giving you so much headache because they don't nap. It's going to be challenging to put them on a nap. Hey, Evangelist Grace. Thank you for joining us. Hello, everyone. Welcome, Evangelist Grace. Your child is so unstable because she will not nap. He will not nap. Cause them to nap. Take your husband's gadget away. You want to have a great marriage relationship? Don't do it in a rude way. Talk with them. Or pray about it. It's true. Sleep. Even you. Yes. We are everywhere until we don't have time for ourselves. You're not available. You're not. Because you don't sleep. I always talk to women. We had one of our platforms, which has been merged into Bill Bible Studies. Oh, my God. Was that a great start or what? BBS was something. The daddy told me, go back and listen to BBS. And I'm going to listen. What is BBS? Bill Bible Studies. But before we had BBS, we had something for women. Bill Prayed Wives. And one of the things I was teaching the women is that, I said, one day you will die. What is this thing about, oh, my, my family, my family, my family, my children, my children, onto the point where you're not even available. You're so stressed because we, we can't even feel you. We can't even feel you. Especially women. You don't even have time for yourself. Valentine's Day just went by. How many of you, I went and did my bra. I did. I told you I was going to do my bra. I did my hair. For me first. Anyone that likes it is an advantage to them. Is Ima, you're selfish. No. I have grown to learn that I can only be available as me. So if I'm taking care of everyone else to the expense of me, they will not even have me. 
sleep. That's what we're talking about. Pay the price. It's a great price for relationship. Rest. Schedule your life. Schedule fun. On your daily schedule, put the time when you go to your phone. You're not the CEO of this world. Please, everybody type that for me. I am not the CEO of the world. What does that mean? Things can go bad without you, and that's okay. And things might not even go bad without you. Amen? Say, I am not. No, I'm, this is not plain. Everybody. I need to see at least 14 types. I am not the CEO of the world. Meaning that this world can as well go and be fine without you. One of the reasons why we lie to ourselves, we cannot take breaks, we cannot rest, and therefore have bad relationships, we're grumpy and sad, is because we don't take care of ourselves. You don't rest. Every, you're everywhere. You go to every baby shower. You go to every meeting. No is a very holy word. You know that? The five virgins. What saved them from missing not to go with Jesus was no. They had to say no. And because they said, no, we're not giving you our oil, they made it. Mother, all these 90 miles an hour you do in your mind, if you die, somebody will murder your children. Somebody will be a mother to your children. Father, all of this, if I don't do it, if I don't do it, if I don't do it, if I don't do seven hours, if I don't do a 10, 12, seven days a week, 12 hours, Seven days a week, 12 hours, my, my family will die. They will die. That's the reason they will die. Because you're overworking yourself. Where's the place of God in your family? You're not resting because you're doing the part that God should be doing. You don't rest. And you're lying to yourself that the reason you're doing it is so that your family can be fine. That's the same reason your family is not fine. And that's the same reason your family would not be fine. You're not the CEO of your family. Rest. Schedule your life and get some time to rest. I understand seasons and times. Like I was sharing, when Bill for Global Impact was starting, there were times where I would sleep a night, three, four hours a night, but I would get refreshed because I'm doing what I was called to do. I was doing exactly the assignment. I'm balancing it up because somebody can take this out of context and get, and get, it, there, and get it wrong. There are times when you're doing something that is needed for that season. It's not going to be like that for all your life. It shouldn't. Number two, when you're doing work, like you're doing what you ought to do, when you go to sleep, you will rest. One of the reasons people don't sleep and rest is because you, you spend your time on, on profitable things. A word to a wise is enough. One of the reasons or the price we we'll have to pay let me conclude that, is to create a schedule for yourself, schedule your rest time, schedule your study time. A lot of us, since we left school, we've not read anything else. Some people go to church, but they don't even know where their Bible is. I'm telling you, my Bible could not be missing for one hour and I will know. It's not possible. I don't care where I am. I will know that that Bible has miss, is missing. If I'm with my mind on, there's something I'm going to go search in that Bible in the next two, three hours. Why it's that important? So people have never read a book on self-care. You've never read a book on how to be a better mom. You've never read a book on how to eat healthy. You've never read a book of the importance of something that's important to you. And how can you truly claim it's important to you? Rest. Study on the importance of rest. And incorporate it. You see the place of knowledge? Learn, study, know. The next thing is what do you eat? What are you eating? Number two, what are you, number three, sorry. The price, the knowledge. We have to pay the price. Number one. Number two, sleep. Number three. Number three, food. What are you eating? Do you know? There are a lot of people that are agitated. They are cranky because of their diet. You don't eat healthy. You eat all the junk. And because of that, you can't even reason like a human being. And now people can't even stay around you because you're so sad, mean, and, and angry. Not ugly. Sorry. <laughs> angry. <laughs> yes, it can affect your physical look. 
The food you eat. Now let's start with the spiritual food. Right? How much of the word do you eat? Your food. How is your spiritual diet? Do you know the Bible has the ability to keep you stable in your relationships? Just like we saw. When you know that when people make you mad, they could be nasty. People make you mad. It, it could be because there's a demonic power in their lives. When you study your Bible and you see that, what would that do to you? You help you to be stable, temple. It brings stability. Therefore, what will happen? You will not get out of a healthy relationship. You will not cooperate with an unhealthy relationship. Food. What are you eating? The word of God. Do you drink enough water? Do you know some migraines can be cured just by drinking enough physical water? We're not talking about the water of the world. We're talking about water. Do you know some heart burns can be cured just by stopping to eat chips, stop eating chips, dry food, your diet? Do you know your diet, what you eat, spiritual food, physical food can affect the way your mind reasons? I shared it severally. A couple that was seen in therapy. And they will usually come. One of the biggest challenges was that the woman was so grumpy, nagging, stupid, and all the names you can call. And they could not stand it because they would not communicate. And by the spirit of God, I could discern. I've seen them for almost three weeks. And usually I see people for months. By the grace of God, not pride. Three months max. I've seen them for three weeks and I wasn't seeing progress. I had to pray in tongues. I said, Lord, help me with this case. And he gave me a word of knowledge. One word. A word of knowledge. He said, ask the woman about her diet. Oh my goodness. That was the rope. As soon as we untied it, that was it. Are you being a bad wife because you're not eating healthy? Are you being a bad husband because you don't take care of yourself? Young people, single, do you know you're going to carry babies in your womb? Man, do you know you're going to give your wife a seed? Do you know the seed is going to be affected by the quality of the food you eat? Okay, you cannot cook. Okay, go to McDonald's and buy a healthy salad. Yes, for $3. It's cheaper. And it's going to affect the way you reason. Are women running away? You're proposing to sister. They don't want to come close. Because you're not looking healthy. Start eating healthy. Drink your water. Drink spiritual water, the word. Drink physical water. Schedule your water. What is wrong for you to carry a bottle around and your whole body is healthy, is hydrated, and you look good so a woman can admire you? What's wrong? Schedule your water. There are so many apps that will tell you when to drink. There are so many apps that will remind you you didn't eat your veggies today. You see, this, this technology is not so that we become miserable. Technology is not so that our relationships break apart. Technology is so that we can have better relationships. Pay the price. It's cheaper to drink water than to have a headache. True or false? It's cheaper. Drink your water. The water of the world. The water that you, 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 you drink. Miss Daphne is online. She's going to tell us the kind of waters to drink. Miss Daphne was teaching the women once the kind of waters to drink and how to. Miss Daphne, I hope you're online. If you're online, that's your portion. Begin to teach right now. Tell the family the quality of water that is good for the body. She knows. We're in a family. We, we, we have to be able to build one another. She built herself in that area. She will tell you things like if your water is not that healthy, put a little bit of lemon in it. Make it what? Alkaline or whatever. She knows that. That's not my area. If she's online, she's supposed to be online. She will tell you all what to do. Miss Daphne. Yes. You, you need to know these things and do them. Now, many times we think that demons, uh, um, demons are this, this spirit that, that just latches on everybody. No. The Bible is clear. He said the enemy goes around looking for someone to devour. Hey, welcome my sister Clementine. Fondam Fombat. Welcome sister. We're glad to have you. Family make her welcome. Demons don't just jump on everybody. Some of us open the doors. You're not having great relationship because you're not doing your assignment. 
Some people will put the blame on everyone else, but take responsibility. Take your part of the responsibility. Eat well, eat healthy. What about working out? Do you know that's the best stress a reliever? Not medicine, antidepressant, working out. And the amazing thing with working out is that you can make your own schedule. You can choose to say, okay, my working out is dancing for 20 minutes until I sweat. I was teaching the women once and I told them, I said, I don't, I don't walk out to sweat. I walk out for my heart to beat right. Just let your heart beat right. Help your heart to beat correct. It's very healthy. It's very healthy. You're grumpy. You can't even take care of your own children. The Lord has given you. You're not even enjoying them. They are running around the house. Instead of you running around with them and having and enjoying them, you're like, sit down, sit down, sit down. You're distracting, you're disturbing. Why? Because you know you can't run around. You can't. So what is that? You're not having a healthy relationship with your children. You have to pay the price to have a healthy relationship with them. Summer is coming. Now you see this hypocritical lifestyle where everybody's going to be in the field in the summer, right? Then in the winter, what do you do? If it's important, you will have to be able to do a schedule it. Schedule. Anybody that listens to me, we hear schedule every time. Because it works. I was listening to a man of God. He said, no matter how anointed, no matter how gifted you are, if you're not a focused person, if you don't have focus, you're distracted, you're everywhere, you do anything and everything, before you know it, no matter how anointed, no matter how gifted you are, you will be like somebody who had none of that. Making us understand the power of focus. And one of the things I have found to be so productive is scheduling. When you schedule and stay with your schedule, you will realize that when you focus on some goals, you get them. Now, when I talk about scheduling, I'm not talking about making a lock and a key for yourself. With scheduling, you are flexible. You have to be able to be wise to, to recognize divine interruptions and also to recognize demonic interventions when it's from the devil trying to pull your attention from somebody who is not even willing to do anything with their life. Run away. If it's a divine intervention, help that person. Don't say, oh, I already have my schedule on my schedule. This thing is not there. I'm not going to stop to do this. No. You need to know when daddy is getting into your schedule and you need to know when the enemy is getting into your schedule. And I can promise you daddy will not get into your schedule all the time. He will only get in there when there's a real need. So what are we saying? The price for quality relationship is knowledge, is good sleep. Stop looking for relationship in the wrong places and the wrong people. Stop going to bed late every night for three years. Sleep enough, get enough rest. We say eat healthy, study your Bible, read the word for yourself. Eat the word for yourself. Your pastor is doing a good job, but you need to do it for yourself. Eat healthy. Genesis chapter 1. As a matter of fact, we'll have to look at that. If we have to end with that, that's fine. Amen. Genesis chapter 1. You'll be surprised. For those of us in the Bill family, dominion. Woo, dominion. Yes, right? As we dominate. Through joy unspeakable, what? Abundant harvest is our portion. But let me show you something. Genesis chapter 1. We're looking at where daddy talked about dominion. It's Genesis 1, 28. I will show you that. After he spoke about dominion, the next thing he was talking to them about was what to eat. I'm just going to go. 29. In 28, he says, then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Look at verse 29. Look at what will save you your relationships. Look at what will keep you stronger and alive. Verse 29, God said, see, I have given you every help that you seek which is on the face of the earth and every tree whose fruit is yielding seed to you it shall be what say it if you were following if you were reading in your bible what's the word to you it shall be food are you seeing that to you it shall be food so every time you're eating those things you know you should not be eat that we eat sometimes ask yourself who is giving me this food a lot of people don't know that the enemy, 
get into your life through the things you eat. People don't know it. You know why? Because this body, this physical body is needed for this realm. Do you know if you don't have this body, you're not good to be on this side of eternity? Yes. You are an alien if you don't have this body. So now that the enemy knows that, what, what do you think he's going to do over time? He's going to make sure he causes you to eat the things that would deplete this body. Because you might have an assignment for the Lord to do for 20 years to come. But if you begin to eat wrong, before you know it, you go. Not because your assignment is completed, but because the enemy kicked you out through your food. Miss Ima, you're turning this thing into a dietary class. No, we're talking about relationships. You overeat physical food and it's even junk. And you go to bed as a married woman. You can't perform because you're so tired. You've eaten all the fufu and the arrow. You've overeaten even. Junk. A man, you've eaten so much. The food is not even digesting. Your stomach is right there. Your wife cannot give you a real hug because your stomach is not digesting all the things that it was not supposed to be eating. Food. There's so much more. But I think we need to end here because we, we've taken a lot of time to explain this. Anybody who is not understanding does not want to. When you read verse 31, you say God saw it that it was good. What is God's will for us? Eat healthy. 31 tells us that he saw the fact that man is going to live by fruits and vegetables. But there is fruit and vegetables. Before medical science told us that that's the best food to eat, that's what God gave us. That's what your manufacturer gave you. It's just that you buy a Honda. And say, I like this Honda so much. And since I like orange juice, I'm going to put orange juice in the car. Hey, hey, are you serious? Orange juice is going to drive that car. Try it. You knock the engines. It sounds funny, but that's the truth. As much as you like to eat junk food, ask yourself, is it going to make me function right? Is it going to make me be the best? We were doing some great teachings with the women. And one time we said, what are the substitutes for meat? Because a lot of women were like, meat, fresh meat. They're really disturbing me. And I was shocked by the substitute myself. I knew beans. I know the legumes, right? But you, 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 you could, people gave us some things to go research. And we were researching. And we saw that there are so many substitutes for protein. And every day they lie to us. There are some food, veggies. I think it was veggies, right? There was a veggie that has more protein than meat, than red meat. But because our mind has been clotted, clocked from the fall of Adam, we don't want to research. We don't want to look for information. And sometimes the reason you cannot, you don't want to go look for information is because you're so clumsy and heavy from the food that you ate yesterday that's not quality. And it makes you so tired and weak and grumpy. Young person, you can't even go for a date night anymore. Somebody's inviting you out. You can't even go out because you're so tired from the food that you overate. How are you going to have a relationship? How are you going to have quality relationships? You go to some churches, they will give you the real word of God. They will teach you the Bible, strong fire word. By the time you come out in the lobby, they're serving cookies and candies. And I'm wondering, who are you deceiving? The same God you're talking about in there is saying people should not eat this. So if you're, if you're in the hospitality department of your church, you have the advantage to talk to someone that works in the hospitality department of your church. Discourage them from serving candies and cookies because it's not in the world. It's not in the world. Miss Ima, so do you ever eat candy? I do. But not intentionally and not all the time. There are times my children will come with candy from school and I will take it and I will take all the candy. And because I have to teach them, I will give them one. And sometimes I will break the one with them. I tell them this thing is not healthy. Just so they can be taught. Because sometimes when you take it from them all at once without teaching them, they will not gain the understanding and they will fight it. Guess what they will do when they go to school next time? They will eat the whole package. They will not come with it at home. If I choose to eat a cookie, I will tell you 80% is in the flesh. If I'm on my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on the Lord, I'm the spirit that I am, I will not eat it. It's the truth. Those are signs for me. When I go somewhere and I begin to eat the cookies, I eat the crackers, I begin to eat those things, I know for sure I'm low on the word. 
Those are indications. They indicate that watch out, you're doing what you ought not to be doing. Meaning you've left what you're supposed to be doing. That's why you can do what you're not supposed to be doing. You need to pay the price. Oh, I don't care. I just like cookies and candy. Well, that's the price you're paying. You're going to get bad health and you're going to get bad relationships. Because you'll be so hyper, you won't you say, I don't care about anybody. Oh, I'm a sanguine. I'm sanguine. I'm sanguine. No. Some people are truly not sanguine. They are not taking care of themselves. That's why they go about sanguine everybody, sandwiching people, scrubbing people with sand, some papers. Meanwhile, it's not true. We need to come to an understanding of the cost of healthy relationships. First, with your own self. Number two, with the Lord and with other people. It's costly. Amen? I don't think I want to come back to the price. Because the price, it is a little bit, let's, let's put it in here. So we can come next week for the price, the one with the Z, what you would get. The next point, we had one, two, three, four. Number five, letting go. Letting go. Letting go is a price we must pay. Look at um, Luke, Mark, the book of Mark chapter five. Jesus went to a village to preach. And because he cast out demons from a man that had tormented the whole village, the pigs went, the, the demon went into a pig and the pig drowned themselves, right? And these people got so mad and they said, Jesus, get out of our country. I'm like, are you serious? They should be happy and grateful. Whoa, finally, this demonic man is safe. They said, Jesus, we don't want you. Do you know what Jesus did? He left. I was reading this morning. I said, Jesus, are you serious? He said, of course. I value myself enough. A lot of us get into relationship with people that don't value us and we stay there and hook. Oh no, it's my mother. No, it's my son. It's my child. And they're abusing you. Let go. It's a holy word. It's a holy thing to do. No, it's my elder sister. And every time she talks to you, you feel like you're dirt. No, it's my husband. It's my wife. It's Ima. Do you need me to get a divorce? No. I want you to tell them no. It's not healthy. God will not pay the price and save you. And now you mortgage your future. Staying with somebody that don't value you. No, ma'am. Don't get out of the marriage. Don't get out of the house. All you need to do, like the, like the wise virgin, say no. Say, I will not be available for abuse. If you want to love me, I'll be available. I am ready to love you if you're available. Abuse, uh -uh. Let go. Let go. It's a price. For quality relationship. It's a price that will help your mind. It's a price that will make you available for another person that needs a quality relationship. Most of us don't attract quality because we have decided to stay with junk. Let go. It's costly, but it's a cheaper price. I spoke to a lady that was getting ready to be, in her understanding, that man that she was in a relationship with was the best. Why? Because all her life, nobody has told her, I want to marry you. Young, beautiful lady. She was in her 20s. I think it was 21, 22. And the enemy had lied to her and clothed her mind and told her that, you see, this is the best you can ever have. But when she met me by the Spirit of God, I didn't even know what was happening. I told her, I said, Listen, that person you are in a relationship with, you think he's the best. But when you let go of that person, you will realize that there are far way better people that can come and be connected to your life than that person. Thank God she heard. She believed. Today, she's happily married in a better quality relationship. But what if she did not let go? That is very expensive. Because the person they had to get married to, we know the person. I know the person. If I compare the, the person's life and who this person is finally married to, it's, it's extremes. Extremes. And you could tell that first person was an abusive person because he's, he has finally married somebody that he's abusing. Are we hearing? Are we understanding? A word to a wise. It's costly. Yes, your marriage can be better if you would just say no to abuse. It can. It can. Believe me, it can. 
a lot of us have not been educated that marriage is good. A lot of us have not been educated that relationships can be quality. I shouldn't be the one calling you all the time. I shouldn't be the one coming for your occasions. When we educate ourselves and do right, we'll enjoy it. But when we choose not to pay the price, then we'll suffer. And who are you going to blame? Daddy? No. You don't want to pay the price. Oh, it's expensive. Okay. Then you will be staying in bad grumpy relationships so let go so you can have a better relationship amen let me plug my phone one minute please pay the price letting go is a price and when you let go you will enjoy more you you will celebrate more let go Number, number, what was that number? Number number six. Let go of control. A lot of us don't enjoy relationship because we want to control everything. We want to be the one to say the last word. We want it to go the way I know, the way I want. Balance. Hold on. I'm not sure. This needs to clock. One minute. <laughs> We, we want to control everything. The people around us cannot breathe. They don't even value us because they, every time they see us, they see a police woman or they see a policeman. Every time they see us, they know that they, have, they, they don't count. Whatever they're going to say will not count. So they are, they are wondering, okay, if I'm in a relationship with this person, what is in it for me, as we hear some people will say, right? Because they have looked at you, they've evaluated the relationship, and they can tell that you don't care about them. All you care is to control. Now, I'm not talking about parent and child relationship. Somebody needs to be an adult. And I'm not also talking about you telling somebody, no, I can't be in a relationship with you, with you because you're not, you don't believe in the word. You're not doing the word of God. There are people when you begin to hold them to the standard of the word, they'll say you're controlling. Can someone not just do their own thing? Or, or some people will tell you salvation is personal. Listen. Then you go to number four, number five. Let go of that relationship. If they're trying to make you feel like you're controlling, meanwhile, you know you're holding them to a standard, then you let go. Are we understanding? Don't be controlling. Control in a relationship is very costly. Letting go and trusting daddy is a lesser price. Trusting daddy and not controlling is a lesser price. So let go of control. And the only way you let go of control is if you're secured. A lot of people don't let go because they are insecure. A lot of people want to be in control because they are insecure. When you're so secure, what is the point shaking your husband's phone every night? If you're really, truly secure, why you, you trust the Lord, you're teaching your children the word of God. What is the problem wanting to check their WhatsApp, check their every platform? What's the problem? If you know that it's a partnership with the Lord, why are you trying to do the part that only daddy can do? Why? Let go of control. Amen? Now, the other thing you have to be aware of is you have to pay the price of evaluating your re relationship. Somebody say evaluate. That's number, that's number seven. The, the price to pay is evaluation. Constant Stand evaluation. You have to evaluate your relationships with everyone. You could be a supervisor at work. You have to evaluate the people you're working with. If they are they're constantly bringing pain, go to the boss and say, I will need a change in my department. If they, you're working with a, a supervisor that is so unconsiderate, pray about it. Pray for them. Talk to the Lord. If he gives you something to do, do. If you know to talk to somebody, do talk to somebody. You're married to someone that is inconsiderate. I, I have, um, oh, oh, this is funny. I, <laughs> I'll share it. I have a couple that I was I was dealing with once. The man tells the wife, I don't believe in birthday celebrations, right? And then the woman said, okay, now that you don't believe in birthday celebration, what we're going to do is during my birthday, we'll celebrate. And during your birthday, we will not celebrate. Guess what? They agreed. And that's what they did. When it's the wife's birthday, they celebrate. When it's a man's birthday, they don't celebrate. Can I tell you the truth? It's deception. It's a big lie. 
when somebody tells you, I don't believe in Valentine's Day, they're simply telling you, I don't love you enough. I don't value you. That's the truth. If they tell you they don't believe in Valentine's Day and they take you out, be the woman or the man. Taking out in a healthy relationship should not only be the part of a man, it should be anybody that knows the importance and want to do right, right? So they, 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 they did that. It worked for them. Why am I sharing this example? I'm sharing this example to say that you have to evaluate your relationships. If you have people in your life and all they do is take, 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 mm, you're in the wrong place. Run for your dear life. Amen. Evaluate. You have a relationship where the people contribute zero in your life. Worst of all, they don't have a purpose. They just live anyhow. They don't care if it's at work. All they do is gossip about the supervisor, gossip about the, the company. That is a no-no relationship. Pay the price and get out of it. Get out. It's not going to help you. Yes, what about your children? What about your husband? What about your wife? Evaluate. Talk to your children. Say, I think I've been taking care of you since you were birth. I don't remember the last time you brought me candy from school. They are younger ones. Encourage them to give from their young age. They, are, they, they have money. They make a salary. No. A mom, I'm paying my student loan. I, I know. I'm not going to be around forever. I'm not saying you demand from them, but hold them to accountability. If they want to be in a relationship or you excuse yourself. There's a bad mindset, especially with African origin parents. When they have children, they make the children their collateral security or their insurance. Now, children, hear me. Let me start with the children, us children. Take care of your parents. Do as much as you can. But for a parent to, to, to put all your whole life and destiny on hold because your children, biological children, are not taking care of you, you're signing up for frustration. Because the Lord can send anyone to take care of you. But you have to educate your children on the importance of sowing into your life. The Bible is everywhere in the Bible. It's a blessing to sow into your parents. So evaluate your life with your children. If people don't have identity, they are not dreaming to be better than that job where you are. They're going to sit there and gossip. They are so, they are so satisfied with making $3 an hour. They will never be challenged to do different. And if you stay with them, that's who you will be. Who stopped you from being a doctor in your field? Who stopped you? Who said you could not? Age? No, you can. There are people that have been doctors at 70, 75. They had it as a goal. Maybe something stopped them. But then they heard somebody talking like I'm talking to you tonight. And they say, I'm picking this vision. I'm dusting my vision. That's the beauty of healthy relationships. Because they provoke you. They challenge you to go higher and better in life. So evaluate the people around you. Evaluate your circle. John Marx was a great leader. He says if your life will go to the direction of the five people you're closest to. If you at work, five. At home, five. So ask yourself, who are the five closest people I have? That's who you will become in the next few years. <clears throat> people who don't have focus, you will never gain focus being around them. People who don't have a purpose, you will never... I don't care if it's your husband. If your husband says, I want to stay um, a security officer in the U.S. for 25 years, that's their decision. They can stay right there. But you don't stay a nurse or a security woman as they are doing. You don't. You have a choice to go higher, but just make sure you still treat everyone with respect. Because the bad thing with people going higher is that sometimes we get into our minds and then we treat everyone else mean. No. When you evaluate, you're not cutting people off so you, you, you feel proud. Oh, I cut people off because I'm, most, I'm the most better person. You get into pride and it will bring you down fast. Amen? Above all, the best price you can pay that will yield every single time. Pay the price of your spiritual connection. I'm telling you, if you put your wife or your husband before God, it's a matter of time. That relationship will break. If you put your children, for example, we talk about children taking care of their parents. If you get to a point where your children become your source, daddy is coming for that relationship. If you put your mom as your source, your dad as your source, before you know it, daddy is coming for that relationship. Anything you worship more than God is a matter of time. God is coming for it. Why? Because life has been designed for every human being to have a God. My question tonight is, who is your God? 
Who is that you cannot do with? Who is the person you cannot do with? Who is that person in your relation, in, in, your, in your surrounding that you're relating with that you suddenly think you cannot do without? Watch out. If you make God the only relationship you cannot do without, he's going to begin to open your eyes to see how priced you are and you begin to value and evaluate yourself to the point where you begin to associate with people that will, will, will take you higher. You begin to get connected to people that will value you, people that will give you valuable information that will take you higher. But if you begin to make everything else, but God, the most important, before you know it, you begin to go down and down and down and down. So for every cost we've talked about, those are a cost. But the cost for a healthy relationship is your relationship with Jesus. The cost, the most important, is your fellowship relationship with him. When you have that one in place, everything will fall in their rightful place. Amen? It's a choice. Jesus is a choice. Don't tell me you cannot give your heart to Jesus. It's a choice. I don't care if you're in the occult. I don't care if you're a grandmaster. If you make up your mind as you're listening to me, you say, I want to give my life to Jesus. You can do it. And if you're one of those and you're online, you want to give your life to Jesus, raise your hand, indicate a hand, and we'll pray for you. And if you're watching this after the live recording and you want to do that, leave us a message below down this video and we'll pray for you. We'll pray with you. Jesus is for everybody. I don't give you a Buddhist, you're a Muslim. The Bible is clear. It says he so loved the whole world. That he gave his life for everyone, 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 Muslim, Christians, everyone. If you're going to church and he's not number one, he's not the top on your relationship list, this is the time to make him top. You can go to a building all your life. You end up in hell if you don't know him. Most of you don't know my home. You cannot just bomb into my house because you don't have a relationship that can cause me to invite you to my house. Heaven is Jesus' house. You need to have a relationship with him that will cause him to bring you to his house. That's why we're not staying in heaven. That's a teaching for another day. Are we understanding? It's very important. Amen? It's very important. I want us to pray and say, Lord, thank you for this word. Thank you for the grace. I receive the grace to pay the price. I receive the grace to pay the price, the price first. In the name of Jesus, that I will value my relationship with you. After all, what will it profit me to gain the whole world and lose my relationship with you? Thank you for giving me this word tonight. Lord, I thank you for the grace to be knowledgeable. I thank you for the grace to evaluate my relationships. I thank you for the grace to sleep and rest every night. I thank you for the grace to eat healthy. I thank you for the grace to evaluate and delete relationships that are not helping me be the best. I receive grace tonight and I choose to do different. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Can I hear your amens? If you agree with that prayer, can I hear your amen? Amen and amen. All right, you know how we sign out? You know what we do? We've done our announcements. Everything that you will need to remind yourself will be on the WhatsApp platform. And thank you all for joining us, for the people that joined us today for their first time. Thank you all for joining us. We pray that you will join us next week. It's the same time. Every week we are here on the same channel. Save the Subscribe to this YouTube channel. So every time we come live, you get the subscription notice. We also have our mother channel. As a ministry, we have a channel. It's called Beautiful Global Impact. Can somebody in blue share a message from our mother channel so other people can subscribe to that channel? On that channel, we'll send you a devotional, daily devotional. We believe that technology is for, us, for our benefit, for assimilation, so you can be able to receive a daily devotional um, audio. It's an audio. You get it on your phone. It's less than five minutes loaded straight to the point. We give you something you can hold on to and run with every single day. Amen. So we're going to praise the Lord for a few minutes and then we'll close. Amen. Amen.
yes thank you daddy for this session i was testing the music thank you for this session lord we didn't plan for it to be long but you made it this good and strong we're grateful we're thankful we ask lord that the grace that you've released upon everyone that we will put it into use in jesus name amen let's praise him for a few minutes and then we'll be out of here I will praise the Lord. I will praise Him every day. Are you gonna praise Him every day? Oh yeah. I will praise Him every day. Oh, it's a choice. I will. I will. I will. Amen. It's a choice. Oh yes, it's a choice that we're making. Oh yes. So you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's our, the ministry channel. This is my professional channel where I use my professional skills with the word of God to help you do relationship different. But on our ministry channel, you get our devotional. Please do yourself a favor. Do relationships different. Oh, invest in your relationships. Make sure it's quality. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. You're welcome, Mama. Thank you. My day of joy. This is my day of joy. My day of joy. My day of joy. This is the day. This is the day of joy. Your day of joy. My day of joy. This is the day of joy. A day of joy, a day of joy. Don't call me. <laughs> okay, Madam Cha. Yeah, he does not lie. Hallelujah. His word must surely come to pass in your life. Oh, present to promotion, all kinds of promotions. My God, even my children's report card, I saw some great, great, great things in the report card. I'm like, yes, promotion, promotion. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, we're grateful people. Tell daddy you're grateful. Tell him you're grateful. Oh, don't just receive the word without giving him thanks. Say, I'm grateful. Dance and show your gratitude. Amen. We're dancing in appreciation. That's what we're doing. We're spiritually intelligent. Oh, yes, the plane is coming. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we're grateful, Daddy. Oh, yes. So, so grateful. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come and see what he has just told us. Come and see greater relationships. Better relationships. Woo! Has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. It's changed your mind. You can never be the same. You're going to do relationship differently. You're implicated. Oh, yes. Higher. Higher. Somebody lift him up in your relationship. Amen. Oh, yes. Colette, don't go. Get the benediction. Don't go anywhere. Get your benediction, Colette. Don't go anywhere. Two minutes. The final say, Jehovah. Has the final say. Get the benediction. It's very important. I said it and I heard another woman of God say, I said, wow, this thing is very true. My life around. Jehovah, my life around. He makes a way. Oh, yeah, we receive the housing. Amen. We receive the plane. We receive the cars. We receive a new house. Woo. Ah, ah, keep dancing, Colette. Don't go in anywhere. <laughs> Jehovah. Oh, yeah, Bill City. Oh, my God. I want to leave a joy video. I'm not sure why that is not letting me leave a joy video. Oh, you are the most high. Celebrate. You're alive. Celebrate. Somebody just died a few minutes ago. You're alive. 
Somebody say that. Say, I'm a kingdom billionaire. I'm not sure why that is, but I could hear that. He said, tell the people to declare that. Listen, it feels like it's right here to hear your declaration. See, Colette, why you shouldn't go? Say, declare it with your mouth and type it. I am a kingdom billionaire. Wow. Jesus, I am a kingdom billionaire. I am a kingdom billionaire. Don't ask yourself how it's going to happen. Say it with your mouth. Your daddy created everything with his mouth. Say it. I am a kingdom billionaire. Wow. I just heard that. All right. Let's finish his prayer. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. I turn around. I turn around. I take it back. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I speak upon you. I decree and I declare your week is blessed. You're going out and you're coming in this week is blessed. I decree and I declare your strength is renewed like that of an eagle. You are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Any plan of the devil is aborted in the name of Jesus because you have made up your mind to build your self and view others so shall it be in the name of Jesus because you have chosen to dominate and you have made up your mind that Joyville is your address you will overcome every obstacle and you will dominate in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus amen and amen enjoy your week schedule your life Make the most out of your days. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We love you all, especially those that join us for their first time. Thank you all for joining us. Please come back. We did enjoy your presence. Come back <laughs> and fellowship some more. Amen and amen. Subscribe to our mother channel. This is one of our channel. The main channel has been posted. Subscribe and you'll be blessed. Amen. Amen. That's my mom for real. That's not just like, you know, I was called elderly people mom, but that's my mom. And thank you, mama, for joining us. Was so grateful you came and you're here to the end. Thank you, mama. I appreciate that. It means a lot. <laughs> Love you too. Yes. Love you from Ghana. <laughs> Colette, you're dismissed. <laughs> That's what my pastor would say at the end of the service. He said, You're dismissed. It used to be so strange, but now I'm used to it. So, you all are dismissed. Enjoy your week. Celebrate life in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, I'm a princess for those who don't know. <laughs> That's why my mom calls me princess. I'm a princess here on earth and I'm a princess in heaven. Both, both ways. Well, that other part of me, you will know someday. I've never told you all that I'm a princess, but hey. That's what when moms appear, they do, right? They tell your secrets in public. <laughs> Mom just tell on you like that. <laughs> anyway, I love you all. Is there somebody in need of something? I've wanted to click the end many times. Do you have a prayer need? We don't rush. We don't ever cut the Holy Ghost. Mm, never. Not in this family. We acknowledge our advantage. Is there somebody in need? You want us to agree? 
somebody who needs prayer, you need agreement for something, or you have a testimony, there's somebody keeping us. Who is doing that? I've wanted to click the end almost three times and I, I can feel that pull. We usually give you the advantage. If you don't take it, then we'll let it go. Somebody have a prayer need, you want us to agree with you in prayers, you want the whole family to pray about something you're going through, you're going for an interview, you're expecting a job. Who is that? All right, we're gonna have some music and we'll wait for you to talk. We'll give you one minute, no, two minutes. If we don't hear from anybody in the next two minutes, then we will be going up. But we always give that advantage. We will better do the will of God than to go wrong. I almost click and more. I've, I've tried to click and more than three times. <laughs> Oh, and if it's, you don't have a prayer need and you're not planning to pray for somebody, you're free. You're very free. So my heart is yours. Spirit take charge over me. So my heart is yours. Spirit, take over me. Ooh, let me share the link to this song. Power. Say my life is yours. Say my life is your spirit. Take say over me. Say my life is love. Stay in your spirit. Yes. Say my life is yours. Say my heart is my heart yours. Is your spirit, take over me. Spirit, you roll over me. That's a link to the song. Say okay. I guess somebody, your if you're typing. Please type a little faster. If not, we have one more minute, Max. My life is yours. Spirit roll over. Yeah, spirit roll over us. So my thought is yours. My thoughts are yours. Spirit roll spirit over me. Charge Take charge over, over me. Ooh, good song. Extremely powerful. All right, I'm assuming there's nobody, there's no need. We'd rather wait and not have a need than for us to rush and there's somebody in need. Amen. All right, enjoy the song after this. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to slow it down and I will enjoy it as we all go. Have a blessed week. Bye bye.